What's up, guys? It is Will here, back again for another episode of Lights, Camera, Kiko, Natalie G. Collects. It is Friday, March the 8th, 5.21 p.m. We are just slightly behind just because we were going through some technical uh, things and, of course, uh, catching up because, Natalie, it's been a little while. And Natalie's officially wearing a Hot Toys t-shirt because she went to Hong Kong. And I'm pretty sure, Natalie, the story is that you met JC and Howard. Is that is that an accurate story? If that was the guy who was at the cash register, then yes. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure that was the guy at the, at the cash register. Yeah. Um, yeah, I would say so. I'd say it was. Sorry, the live stream was playing in the background. It was like looping, but I got it. So, but anyway, yeah, that sounds great. So there was a guy named Howard at the cash register. So that wouldn't that be crazy if like you just walked in and it was kind of like, I mean, he's not your boss, but like undercover boss. And you just walked say, up to I love those undercover bosses. Yeah. Like you just walked into like Hot Toys and Howard was at the cash register and no one knew. That would be a really cool thing, actually. I mean, for all I know, I bumped into him on the way and I was like, excuse me, watch where you're going. And <laughs> get the fuck out of my way, sir. <laughs> and be like, I'm Ow. here to get a photo for Will Foxification. Do you know him? Yeah, me, and, yeah, and then he would be like, "No, <laughs> yeah, I don't know who that is." <laughs> yeah, but uh, Natalie, it's awesome. It's good to have you back. And um, yeah, and of course, we have Mr. Kiko collects here. Kiko, dude, I gotta let the people know. Kiko posted a video before this stream, and it's I haven't even watched it yet, Kiko, but I know it's a banger because I saw the thumbnail, and my bro was looking emo as fuck in that thumbnail. <laughs> so Natalie, you gotta check that one out. Kiko and I have cracked the code. Uh, when you look sad in a thumbnail, people click it. So I don't know why that is exactly, but uh, yeah, it's it, true. It's an actual scientific fact. Scientific. <laughs> Go look at any of Will's, look at any of mine, where we're making a face, we're being sad, we look downtrodden, and then look at the view count. And they're <laughs> exponentially higher on all of them <laughs> yep. because people crave negativity and they want to see turmoil. They want to see turbulence. They want to see all the bad things because everyone's life is so shitty already. They're like, oh, there's life is shitty too gotta click so that's what it is mm. well maybe well so i was like all yeah, right we're gonna try something a little different i'm like <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> natalie keep was looking super emo in that video um but i still gotta watch so guys check that out when you're done with okay. the stream when you're done watching the rest of the stream check out kiku's new video i'm sure it's an absolute banger but uh yeah before we get started with all the discussion and everything and all the fun uh i am sick so i'm working through that i've actually been home i don't know what i have covid negative twice so uh, very happy about that. But um, yeah, working through that. So if I sound a little bit nasally or a little bit uh, stopped up, that's kind of why. But before we get to the topics on that, let's at least ask how everyone's doing. Let's be the polite person, uh, the host here that I tend to be sometimes. Natalie, your light's in the background. That looks really, really good. Chad, let Natalie know how good her lights look. Apparently, you're handy now. I mean, what? tell us what went on here. I am a handy mandy. Is what I'm calling myself. Okay. I spent, I was just telling you, I spent hours upon hours, probably the better part of like 17 straight hours wiring these things. So Ty, Ty so that's my, my partner. She literally stood there, by the way, helping me, supervising with a glass of wine, telling me I was doing a great job. It took me, like I said, most of the weekend to do it, but I learned how to wire. I learned how to transfer uh, electricity, insert power. I learned how to cut LEDs. So everybody's like, oh, did you get it from Luke Light? Did you get it? Who'd you get it from? I can't, I got it from me, okay? If you want to know how I did it, so I got it from me. So fucking satisfying, isn't it? It really <laughs> was. So um, I'm it. super, I'm super <laughs> proud of it. Mind you, I got to figure out like how to balance it because right now it looks super bright, which is crazy because I have it on the lowest setting just so it doesn't look so bright. I'll show you. This is what it normally is. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> but it looks so strange like in the video, um, but it's beautiful. The best lighting I've ever seen. It has, there's something called CRI index, which is color rendering index. And um, these have a 93 <laughs> in the chat. color rendering index. <laughs> Thank you for supervising. Shout out to Ty um, in the chat. 93% color rendering index, which means they show like the most accurate version of color up to 100%. So like when I look at them, they're perfectly beautiful. Like you could see every color that pops on the shelf, but in order to get it on camera, I had to lower it to its dimmest. This is its dimmest setting. 
um, which is strange on camera. So I'll figure it out and you guys will get handy. Mandy is the most full house answer you could have given. I love that shit. Natalie, your poses Thank are you, looking pretty man. fire back there. I got to Thank tell you. you. Oh is yeah. Gladiator I, four. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that's why I that's, thought. I, I saw the, I saw the baseball bat club looking thing and I was like, Oh yeah, that's I, my I man that. right there. I love that's that. That's man. one of my favorite I mean, that that for sure. Mm-hmm. Nice. Yeah. That's awesome. You got some really good. So Natalie, is there a collection tour coming in the near future? Um, maybe, maybe. Is there a YouTube channel coming in the near future? Let's <laughs> no. start with that. No. But I, you know what? I do have so my YouTube, I have like one or two videos that I've done for like work or for like a fun event or something where I've like done really neat things. Back in the day when the mannequin challenge was like a real thing, I did something for my job and we had something really fun. So maybe I'll maybe I'll create something and put it privately just so that like will you could review it or something cool. um because i oh, love gosh, those great. videos when you do them um but yeah i've got i still have space i'm going to turn my camera a little bit i still have plenty of space because i've got my darth vader coming mm. i've got this is my ad hoc shelf right so my like non-marvel or star wars show so i've got darth vader coming which is actually going to go over here Ooh. and um then i've got a attack on titan figure coming and i've got a couple other figures that are going to be coming that are ad hoc and they'll go on that side nice well that looks great Daniel. yeah i would love to do that if you ever film one i could do a collection tour reaction I haven't done them as much recent but i would definitely i would do i would do your collection tour for sure oh for sure and i've got a walk-in closet that's got my statues and a bunch of other stuff that i've collected over the years so yeah yeah that sounds great. Well, it's good to have another handy person on the stream because the most handy I've ever felt is when I had people help build me Madri cases <laughs> because uh, that shit was, yeah, I, I never felt more challenged in my life than building those. And, uh, you know, it's they look great, but uh, I did have assistance with it nonetheless. But um, I got to get to Kiko. So Kiko, dude, so good to have you here once again. Dude, I got to tell you that, Kiko, I'm working on this Darth Vader review. And as you know, yeah. we were I had to light up this figure before we started. You can see the light up lightsaber people is not horrible. It's not the best thing ever, but it does stand out on a shelf, particularly when all of your other figures with lightsabers don't have any light up. It really does pop and stand out. So Kiko, are you ready to admit this is the definitive Darth Vader? Definitive? No, absolutely not. I think that's even one of our topics today about definitive fucking <laughs> yeah, figures. But Will, when I saw you right before we started this, I saw you walk over and have to manually turn it on. And that's the only thing I'm like, yeah. Ooh. I like everything being wireless and easy. I don't want to have to open mine up every single time. So I admit that it looks super good with all the cables ran and all the lights on it. I may need to break down one of my shelves just to add some type of power source to maybe it's in the middle of one and I just gravitate and funnel all my USB Sabre figures to it. Exactly. I don't know. Yep. But I, I, as much as I love the opportunity just to turn it on and off as I want, I need it to be wireless. I don't know if I could have the strength to just take it off every single time. That would absolutely work, though. You could just get a power bank that has USB-C, plug the USB-C cord in, yeah. and when you flick the switch for the lights, it'll turn on. Yeah, that would work. Yeah. I mean, so, I'm, well, kind, of, want, go ahead, I'm kind of an electrician now. I mean, I might be able to help. Well, my out. thing well, was... I like, am, too. I am, where too. My I issue is having bank. to break this all down to get to the actual outlet to right. do any of that stuff that's my only issue but it's a game changer though kiko i mean you yeah. guys know but put like it just is such a good feeling to turn on that darth vader and have the belt and the chest light up it just makes the figure look so much better so much more alive yeah the green lights so, look incredible don't they yeah so i've actually come up with or found a way to come come up with um a solution around the outlet so every single one of these lights i didn't want them to have more than one plug so that's mm -hmm. why i struggled so long so i connected each one of the wires for all of the different I really do have to do a tour to show you the intricacies that I did here like it's science so I did um, a small piece of wire that connects from the LED into the next wire and I used a T splitter mm -hmm. so if you have an LED light strip that you're connecting just to the LED and you connect it to one cable just there's one little connector wire you can have the one little connector wire connecting to the main one with a T splitter. I'll, I'll have to show you what I'm, that exactly what I'm talking well, about. Then you could theory. turn all of them. No, no, no. Right now, <laughs> can, can, you use it for any, can you use it for any power source? Like if I, because what I'm saying is that if I can, I essentially run power from a light to power something. Like if I wanted to use that cable, could I power a hair dryer or something with it? Is that what I'm? You see what I'm saying? You get one power source. You have to make sure it's the right volts. The That's amps pushes the volts is the you. thing. 
I yeah, know. Natalie I'm is so handy you. now, dude. I'm telling you. I know it. I, I got you. I'm going to help you. Okay, I'm going to okay. help you. Yeah, because what? Because in my review video, review video, guys, that should be coming over the next couple of days. Hopefully, with Vader, uh, I'm going to be showing the battery pack option again. It's a temporary solution because I'm with Kiko. I'd love to be able to flick on my lights and everything just come on. So a power bank would be a good bet. I just got to figure out where I would put it. Maybe I could Velcro it to like the back of the case or something. Um, but like you said, guys, you could run USB C cables to that entire power bank and then just light everything. So, but um. Yeah. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for joining us, guys. Thank you so much in the chat for joining us this fine evening. We're going to jump into our first topic because we got some news as of this morning. I think we're pretty exciting. And it's not even J&D this time for Kiko. It's something a little bit different. We got in art Dune, Paul Atreides. I never, Kiko, I never pronounced this correct. And the people in the chat were correcting me. Moadib? Mo, is that correct? It, it's still your, depending on your accent, your region, <laughs> things like that. Moadib is kind Moedib. of what they kangaroo mouse essentially yes. is what it is but yes. depending on your accent i think you're fine on pronouncing it the way you are because i don't think you are from um, arrakis by any means so i think you get no i'm not and uh what about the second one lisan al gaib yes yes you got it hey it, it's heavily influenced by um muslim culture and okay. a lot of the muslim dialect and things like that so very much like that the guy that did the essentially the the Furman dialect was the guy who did um, the Targaryen, basically all the stuff from Game of Thrones. So the same person that made that language made this for Dune. Very cool. Oh, okay. Nice. That's awesome. Well, I saw it. Like, is a linguist? Is that the word you're linguist. saying? Linguist. Yeah, linguist. Yeah. yeah. He's a professional linguist. Very cool. Nice. Imagine well, being guys, your job to make up languages. That sounds awesome. Dude, it sounds super cool. It sounds super challenging, though. But uh, if you guys can put together lighting systems, you can do that probably. But, you know, this Paul, this Paul Atreides dude, guys, let me just tell you, Kiko was a big influence on this one. Natalie, I don't know if you've seen it yet. We won't spoil anything from Dune 2. I saw Dune 2 yesterday. That shit's fire. That shit is absolute fire. It's, as the kids say, gas. It is absolute gas. Because Dune 2, Kiko. I don't think it's quite there, but we got almost a Dark Knight level film here. Fear uh, here. I think I think this is a masterpiece level film of sci-fi. So we yeah. got a I think a Dark Knight level film almost here. I would yeah. I would take the Dark Knight just barely. But can I speak to that, Will? Because yeah, I had these course. conversations with some of my my, my closest my my quartet as we yeah. call them, um, my two closest friends I grew up with. We have our group, the quartet. Anyway, yeah. Um, when I got out of the theater, I had said that it could be up there with you know dark knight empire strikes back the only thing i think hurting this is the cult the cultural significance will never touch empire strikes back things are different no. time back then <laughs> but for dark knight dark knight is just so damn quotable from start to finish it's got some really cool moments in dune 2 but I, it's not like you're just sitting outside of you know lisa and you're doing the the still guard meme over and over i mean that's yeah. one meme and that's it and then, you know, there's a few, you know, um, in my blade, you know, shatter and all that stuff, uh, chip and shatter. Chip and I mean, shatter there, yeah. There's some cool moments, but the entire Dark Knight is completely quotable. And I think that's the only reason why it'll stay as one of the most popular and influential you know, sequels and movies ever made. That's true. The why so serious line is still to yeah. this day. Like, yeah. that's, you, know, you say that and no, everyone knows exactly what you're talking about. A hundred percent. Why so serious? hundred percent. But Kiko, I got to ask you the question. I'll start with you on this one before I get to Natalie. But, you know, this is up for pre-order now. Of course, you know, we saw this one, which we'll get to that topic. So you guys saw the topics ahead of time. I do kind of want to leave the is it good that we're getting figures directly from NR because we're going to discuss that probably in the next topic. But for now, just the figure itself. And I got some interesting comments about this one, Kiko, that I do want to bring up into this question. Uh, I think there are a lot of people who want to Dune to Paul Atreides. And no mm -hmm. spoilers, it's a little bit different. Um, there are some visual differences and just some character differences, but there it is a little bit different. But so I saw someone saying, like, are we willing to sort of bite the bullet by this one? And then maybe in art announces a Dune to Paul at some point in the future, and then you end up having two Pauls. So we have that uh, sort of dilemma at hand here. But uh, Kiko, I want to let you speak to that. Has this become a must-have due to Dune 2, even though this is a Dune 1 figure? And is the FOMO real there? People succumbing to the FOMO because of Dune 2. What are your thoughts on this? I think so. I don't recall anyone being this excited during the first Dune. And maybe that's because the original remake, or because it was the remake of the 84 film from David Lynch, and maybe everyone just said, eh, get back to me when part two comes around. Maybe that's what it is. And everyone's just holding out. But I don't remember the groundswell of people just 
losing their minds over everything like they are with this one. When this was originally announced, they said, oh, we're going to be doing Apollo Trades from uh, InArt, and we're going to be, everyone just skipped right over that and went on to the next one. No one really cared. But damn, if you have not seen so many people, and I do think, and I'm not going to throw numbers out there, because I'm not going to say who's a real fan or gatekeep or anything like that, because I'm not a real collector, so I don't have the, the, the ability to say that. But I do think maybe 20% of people are just chasing it because everyone else is chasing it. 20% maybe. But mm. I think 80% of the people that actually are, you know, put up or shut up type of thing, like, a, hey, you know, if you want this, you know, here's your money, let, put your money where your mouth is. I'd say 80% of the people do want it. And it's objectively a very cool figure. It's objectively a piece of pop culture at this point. I feel like Timothy Chalamet or Chalamet's, uh, Star is really on the rise. I think a lot of people with Dune 1, 2, uh, Wonka, all that, they're like, oh, this, this kid knows what he's doing. Um, yeah, I think that the success of Dune 2 100% is pushing this. And it could not be coming out at a better time. It could not be coming out at a better time. And I don't know if we're going to get to it, but I'm just going to throw it on here. Isn't it funny that we got an update on the Og Toys Dune figures today as well because everybody knows is that people's site traffic is probably showing everyone is looking for dune shit and that's awesome and i think that's awesome i would be willing to bet because i know a few places um already have like the og toys uh the, the dune figures are sold out i know they are available still on kits i'm willing to bet they're probably going to go quick in the next week or so so if you do want a leto if you want um, any of the other figures that they have, I think there's a version just like this, um, in the, in the still suit, you know, the Josh Brolin character, um, all that stuff. I think it's fantastic. And you're, there's options available that will tide you over until the NR shows up. Drago's obviously talking about it downstairs, as you can hear. And, um, man, I, I, this could not be coming at a better time. It, they're capitalizing on it. And, uh, we can talk more about it because I have a lot of, more to say, but I don't want to steal from Natalie. No, it's totally understandable. Yeah, we'll we'll keep going on this discussion. But uh, yeah, Drago and Aegon are are conquering the you know the kingdoms down there. But uh, yeah, I will say that I, I'm with you, Kiko. I do think Dune Two is clearly playing a huge influence in this because you know you know just like you referenced, uh, in art was showing Paul Atreides at different events from and from time to time, and no one really gave a fuck. There were certainly people that cared, but we didn't really talk about it that much. So everyone was like, okay, like Dune One was good, like everyone enjoyed it. Denis Villeneuve is is one of the best directors working in Hollywood, but no one really was super, super amped to really go and buy this. Now there's a lot of hype surrounding this figure. And again, I think that's because of Dune 2. And I think there's this hype and anticipation that's building because we don't quite have a uh, cultural phenomenon like Empire to that degree yet. But I think with Dune 3, though, it's not going to reach Empire heights. But I think with Dune 3, you got, you might have something that reaches pretty significant heights. Um, I think, yeah. May, may I? Yeah, go ahead. For, for one, we don't know when or if that'll ever happen. Um, and it, they already said it'll be Dune Messiah. It won't be Dune 3. It'll be Dune Messiah Part yeah, 1, potentially. Yeah. But Dune 3 for all sakes and purposes. But depending on things go, this may be it. You know, you obviously they're going to throw up the money and see how it goes. But who knows? Does it have enough legs that in five, six years people still care? That I'm not 100% sure. Because here we are 12, 15 years removed from the Dark Knight and people are still shitting their pants. So maybe. That's but it's got, it's got a long way to go till then. That's true. Well, Natalie G, I gotta let you jump in on this one. What do you think? I mean, is this a figure that you're uh, now gonna bring home? Is this wait? wait is this you don't have an NR figure yet, right? So this will be your first NR figure if you go in, right? No, my first NR figure is gonna be the Harry Potter figure. <laughs> okay, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, um, yeah. So I I debated long and hard about getting the Joker, and I actually passed on it. And the reason is because the one that I wanted the most was locked behind a four figure. Um, purchase point, which I, I didn't want the other three. Mm -hmm. Everyone was like, oh, you well, you could sell the others. And I just, I didn't want the hassle. So I ended up passing and maybe one day I'll just buy the one that I wanted. Um, so for this one, I've actually never seen the Dune movies. I think at some point it was like tossed up, uh, up and down on whether or not it was a good movie or a bad movie. So I was like, oh, I'll wait till it comes out on a streaming service. And I don't know if it ever came out on one that was like announced that I was aware of. So I really have never seen it. But I've heard really good things about it. HBO Max, if you do want it. HBO Max. Yeah, I do have HBO, uh, HBO Max. So maybe I'll watch it. Um, so Paul Atreides, Timothy Chalamet's character, mm -hmm. seems okay. I don't really know anything about it. Um, he seems like a guy 
who like does stuff. And maybe he's like, maybe he has like a lot of strength. Maybe he's like a commander of an army or maybe he's just like a sand person. I don't know, but he's got like a mask with like a nose piece. And it seems like he's trying to survive on a planet and uh, he's got a cool outfit and he's got great hair. So like for all those reasons, I'm in. That, um, are you actually in? Because that that's all great logic right there. You were like pretty spot on, actually. Am I? <laughs> you like I feel like you did some research because that definitely Kika was she not was she far off there? I mean, I think she was pretty close. I mean the the context clues probably really helped out quite a bit. Um, <laughs> he is standing in the desert in a lot of these pictures, um, but that's I mean, that's pretty you can much go where a I'm getting. Deeper if you'd like, but it. I, I do think you need to watch it. I think you'll be happy. That you oh, I'm did. certain. I'm certain. So I think this is one of those movies, especially knowing all of the actors and the characters that are in it, um, primarily just the the depth of uh, fandom that I've seen so far with it. Either it's one of those uh, movies that everyone is in, but it's not very good. There was one of those. I don't remember which one it was. It was like Brad Pitt and all of these famous Ocean's actors. Eleven. <laughs> hey that was actually a really good movie i like um, 11 12 and 13 were terrible but this seems like the 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 cast alone the star power in the cast tells you like that they expected this movie to make a lot of money otherwise they wouldn't have paid as much as they did for the cast um so i'm sure it's a very good movie but let's you know, bypass movie bypass characters all of that because i really don't know about it just looking at the figure itself this is i mean Let's, let's just talk about facts or facts. This this looks great, right? If I think about everybody who loves this person, right? Just Timothy himself, he is at what he's like right next to Tom Holland. Like, I think there was a competition, like who has more Riz? And I'm like, I don't even know what that word means, but I'm sure it's something to do with their 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 charisma. I think that's and actually where it comes French. from. I mean, how much cooler can you be? That's true. But um, they really nailed it. So I think they've got like a direct audience to everyone who is a fan of his, whether they like the movie or they don't. The figure looks identical to him. I mean, they really, really nailed it. I don't know how they do this eyebrow thing they do. Every figure they've released looks like it has rooted eyebrows, but they're never rooted. So like, how are they doing that so well? Because I'm, and I don't dash on Hot Toys. I only collect Hot Toys. I don't have a single in art figure. Um, but they do eyebrows way better than any of the hot toys that I have or I've seen. And maybe I just, I don't know, maybe it's just my own personal opinion. So I think they're doing a really good job. I think the hair is the perfect length for what they've been able to pull off. This will be one of the shorter ones that they do besides the Bruce Wayne. The Bruce Wayne, I think every, no, not a lot of people like the way that that turned out at least in the in the photos. So this will be like teetering the Aragorn and the Bruce Wayne. It's like right in the middle. It's almost a bob. So I'm curious to see if this comes out the way it's supposed to. But other than that, I think they nailed it. I think it looks great. Anyone who likes the movie is, there's no reason not to get it. It's it's like, in art doesn't come out with a lot of figures. So it's like, if you like the movie and you like in art's quality, jump on it. Like, why not? So yeah, this looks yeah, really good. Yeah, it looks super exciting. Natalie, you got to watch it with Ty. So if Ty's still in the chat, Ty, get Natalie to watch the first the two Dunes. You know, watch Dune 1. It's good. It's a really well done film. It's a little bit of a slow burn. The second one, though, just dude, it's it's just a while. Visually, spectacle, storytelling, character development, relationship. All I can story. say is that when Stellan Skarsgård is an afterthought in the movie because there's so many other better performances, what does that tell you? I mean, Austin Butler, good lord. Dude, Austin Butler is so good. Yeah, in the movie. Austin Butler is so good, man. So you, I didn't even know part two came out yet. Yeah, I, it's in I, theaters I, now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's oh, in theaters, okay. but it's making really good money, like you guys were referencing. So Kiko, I'm I Denis Valneuve already said he's writing the third one now. So I, you know, I think I think for sure there is a third one coming, whether it takes five, six years, maybe maybe it takes four years, who knows? Uh, but it's it's gonna be a little while for sure. It's not gonna be like a one year thing or two year turnaround. So I think I saw his uh, uh his timeline. There's three movies already in front of it that he's planning on working on. Um, mm -hmm. he showed what he's what he's currently working on. There's a secret project. Some people like uh said it may be attached to a Star Wars film. Dude, he did some, a Star Wars film. Some people yeah. said it could be attached to Sicario three. Mm -hmm. Who knows? But there is a secret project he's working on before he gets uh to Dune Messiah. So mm -hmm. But wow. it, who knows? They may drop a million zillion dollars on his lap and say, we need this movie right fucking now. And then you obviously have to jump.
Yeah. Well, guys, check out Dune 2 if you haven't already. It's got our uh, seal of approval from Kiko and I. And Natalie's going to watch it. And I'm sure she's going to love it. And then it's going to be right next to Harry Potter. That's what I can say. So because uh, you know, this, this looks great, though. As far as the figure itself, we're going to talk about that next, actually. But, dude, this is so good. Guys, let's talk about the other major thing we need to discuss here, though. Because um, we obviously, this is different. This is different than what we've experienced in the past, right? Uh this is actually a figure that you can pre-order directly through InArt because this is the first InArt figure thus far that has had a worldwide license, meaning they can sell it worldwide in the United States, not just in Asia. They don't have to go through Hong Kong resellers and wherever else you need to get these figures from. So, um, you know, this is something that is, I think, pretty exciting for a lot of us. So I do think that we need to discuss sort of what the ramifications of this are and what this means, uh, you know, for all of us collectors who are looking to pick up these in art figures. You know, this one is, is by the way, appearing on the in art website now. You can pre order it if you're looking for it. It's $475. Uh, and then shipping, I saw a note today. I don't know if this was directly confirmed by in art. I can reach out to them, but for comment, but it's maybe $10 to $25 shipping, someone had mentioned. So it's not that expensive. We'll see. I'm, I'm a little skeptical on that. Really good, actually. Yeah, that would be great. But four hundred seventy-five dollars, Natalie, for this figure for Rooted, uh, the for the deluxe version. The sculpted version is about three sixty uh, plus shipping. So really, not too bad. I had someone tell me at one point they were like, "Yeah, this figure is going to be like three fifteen. I was like, "No, no fucking chance. <laughs> no chance. Like it's not with Rooted hair. Uh, it's just not." Um, so I I thought maybe it was going to come in a little cheaper than this, like four fifty or twenty five. But I think it's still pretty good value, all things considered. But Kiko, I got to ask you the question, bro. I mean, now we're buying directly from InArt. This is great because Kit has done amazing. I got to give Kit so much credit. And we, you know, not every InArt figure is going to be licensed worldwide. So a lot of us are still going to continue to buy from Kit and other people, other retailers too, like Spec and wherever else you want to get them. I'm sure they're all great. But um, they've all done such a great job. But buying direct, that just hits different, does it not? So Kiko, what do you think about this? Wait, Kiko, before, before, you, before you answer... You don't need to rush. I got I got a package at the door, so I'm Ooh, gonna okay. jump go and grab it. it. Yeah. yeah go so for it. actually, I ordered I ordered two more of these because I got eight more figures that I need to put up. So oh it's actually God. here. So I'm going. Now you're that kicking right that now. beautiful plant out of there for more displays. Oh, yes. Okay, <laughs> that's a collector right there. Anyway, Kiko, sorry. Go ahead. No. So this is the game changer. At least I feel. And I, I love what you said just a second ago. Is said that we're not moving away from kit or anything like that. Um, by the way, my aug toys are through kit. So, I mean, I still am getting, you know, and my jokers through kit. Um, so my other joker came from kit. So, I mean, I use him and he's trustworthy and he is a great rep reputation within the one six community. Love that. But I saw, I think collecting weekly put the price breakdown chart of showing how much it is from everybody. And if you're that person that says I'm looking for the best deal possible, there's no other option than to get it directly. I have no idea what Big Bad Toy Store is doing, charging like $700. <laughs> Insane. Whatever. That, that, that one's fake news. Um, but all the other ones, even after you have the codes and all that, there, there makes no sense why you wouldn't go directly through Queen slash in art directly. There it is right there. If you use the code, blah, blah, blah. You know, even with 1.6, even with Kit, it's still a little bit high, you know, but free shipping. Now, the thing that you have to say as far as the asterisks go, and then there's lots of asterisks on here, I'm going to be pissed if any of these other retailers get the Queen Studios exclusive Kangaroo Mouse Moidib. That is the whole reason I am on board for buying this directly. And great job, Queen and Art, for doing something to say, hey, not only are you going to get a great deal, we're going to give you something a little bit extra if you come over to our side. I love that. That's awesome. And damn, what a perfect accessory. That was incredible. Now, if any of these other people get that, I'm going to be pissed. I'm going to be pissed. So don't do that, people. John, if you're listening, don't do that. That's going to make me really, really angry. So the other big asterisk is how is it getting? Oh, isn't that incredible? <laughs> Dude, Jay, it is, and it's a big accessory. That's an important accessory. It is. It's, 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 it's a character shaping. It really it is. is, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but J&D's Joker dogs have nothing on this. So I'm <laughs> nope. super excited about that. But here's the deal. It says that they will cut in art will cover. Th there's two things I've seen. It says in art will cover the shipping costs or whatever from China. Damn it. <laughs> nice. In <laughs> um, art will cover the shipping costs from China to uh, US, wherever it may be. But then it says expected to be 10 to 20 bucks. Now, you and I know that's not airmail. That's probably freight. That's probably by boat. 
That's the only thing that I'm hesitant about. But does that mean as soon as they finish up production at Queen, they're throwing it on a boat and it's on its way? Okay, sure. It'll get here in a couple weeks probably, and then everything will be fine. If you go to, let, I'm just going to say Kit, for example. If Kit's your guy, you know, he does obviously DHL and free shipping. Is he going to be able to get it right from Queen? Forget the boat, just put it on a plane and get it to you? Is that worth the extra 50, 60 bucks to save like, you know, two weeks of getting it to you? To me, nah, especially because you're not getting Moideeb. So you get the mouse, you get the better deal, and... I think this is what I have been looking for. So here you go. Look, look, look. I have been waiting to suck <laughs> off came back at the perfect time. I've been waiting to suck off in art for quite a while. And <laughs> this, this splooged all over my face when I saw this. This made me so happy. And that was beautiful, Geeko. That was thank that you. Was and, and I know it's not going to be for uh, for everybody because for I mean everybody for all the different licenses, because some of them are not worldwide. But as I know, Michael Jackson's going to be a worldwide um, release, as, as I've said. So that is good for me. So that's now two for two of uh, potential things. If if Dan if they can get it to where it works out to where Danny is um worldwide release as well, I'm gonna be thrilled. And then I can probably rest, just like I said. And that we'll come up to that when we get to Shin later on. But uh, this is huge. This is huge. This is something that Hot Toys doesn't do. And <laughs> I think that's great. <laughs> We got the the comments, Kiko, our comment right now <laughs> about your uh, your act. I mean, I yeah, that was that was a loving act, though. I could tell that was done out of love. So yeah, yeah. I mean, because all that time, Kiko, people accuse you of sucking off Howard Chan. Remember, now you're sucking off in on. So I am, you know, I I will blow whoever makes me feel good. You know, <laughs> obviously, Even, <laughs> Natalie, he's been watching too much Love Is Blind. I can tell he's he's invested in Love Is Blind. Now he's just blowing everybody. So yeah, look, it's 2024. Okay, it's we'll just. I mean, it's nothing we'll wrong with blowing someone, but I'm just saying that, you know, he's, he's Howard Chan now in art. Like, I mean, it, it, it'll it's be transactional at this point. It's transactional. It's all good. <laughs> okay, gotcha. Okay, trans You're like an escort, dude. That's pretty much you are. High yeah. end, of course. <laughs> but uh, so, Natalie, hopefully you, you got your package. And um, we got the prices here. Thanks. Shout out to Collecting Weekly. Those guys are over there. They got the most sex appeal in all of 1-6 scale collecting, no doubt about it. I mean, they have Dean the Dream and Zach over there. And they have Ben Thomas and Marco. I mean... That, that's a pretty handsome stacked lineup over there. So shout out to these guys for coming up with this whole graphic about the pricing and this and that. Uh, like we all said, they tend to do this. I don't know what the fuck Big Bad's doing. <laughs> they're just like, they don't care what anyone thinks, bro. Some people said that they're just playing the long game, hoping that once it eventually sells out, people will rush to say, I have to have it. I'll, that's, yeah. And it's got the built-in markup. Mm -hmm. But remember, as soon as we called them out on their bullshit, they dropped their price on Big Bad Toy Store for some of their other in-art figures literally the next day. So yep. fix that shit. If you're don't watching Big Bad, yeah. If you're watching Big Bad, don't be ridiculous. Yeah, because there's so many good options out there now for this one. So yeah, but uh, Natalie, so I got to ask you this one. I mean, Kiko made some really good points, Natalie. Just talking about so with this one with the website, you get the exclusive Moadib accessory of the mouse, right? That's a really important accessory, and it is something that uh, you know is is character. Um, you know, character connected. Like it's very much an accessory that is important to, to Paul. So in terms of his development, particularly for June 2. But so this is something you get that exclusive accessory with. And overall, I mean, the ideal, the idea here is that ideally you would get the figure faster than everyone else and you get the exclusive accessory for cheaper. So I do like what Inart's doing here, provided the shipping is relatively quick. But Natalie, what do you think this means moving forward if we get more worldwide licenses where we can buy from Inart directly? Because imagine if we could buy from Hot Toys directly. Wouldn't that be nice? Yeah, I mean, when I was in Hong Kong, I got I to go to the source, right? <laughs> and there are so many people right now, I kind of regret not um, doing it because there's a couple of people on Reddit that like I uh, wish I could have helped. But they have things like Crosshair that are just still available because mm -hmm. it's not popular there, but everybody is searching here for it. So I digress. So what do I think about this? Obviously, it's the best way forward, right? It's as a as a company. How do you how do you get your product out? You sell it, you offer it. So of course, what makes total sense? Why wouldn't I? Of course. But if you think about all of the vendors that you just had, or all the third party resellers, or all of the sites that that you just had listed, the only way if it's available directly from the source, and if anything is messed up, the face, the sculpt, the hair, the clothes, the anything and I can go directly to the source and get it fixed, what incentive do I have to buy from 
BBTS, uh, uh, Collector Zone, Comic Concepts, anywhere else. What's it, what's my incentive? The only incentive they could possibly offer me is to lower the price, right? So if they get it for a different price than we get it for, then they would have to take a marginal cut. And if they did, they could potentially gain more customers by saying, well, if you buy it through InArt, you're going to get it for this price. But if you buy it through me, you're going to get it for $10 cheaper. And then they drive more people to buy it from them. So obviously there's no other reason to not buy it directly from InArt because right now they're a brand new company. They have nothing to nothing to lose and everything to prove. Wait, am I saying that right? Everything yeah, to lose. <laughs> everything to lose and everything to prove. Um, so at this point, if I needed to buy directly from them and it doesn't go well and they don't correct it, social media is gonna destroy them. So it's like I I it's just like sideshow, right? They have great customer service because they know that's the one good thing that they they offer. Um, they're also now starting to ship as just as quick. So buying directly from the company is the best way to go, obviously, especially if it's the same price. So if you're looking to get this, if you're looking to get uh, and if they get more global licenses like this, there's no reason to buy from anybody else. Like this would be the direct place to go. Um but I'd be curious to see if other vendors decide to lower their prices at all. Like how else would you compete with this? Cause I'm certainly not gonna go to big bad toy store and spend a hundred dollars more when I could get $10 shipping and buy it at retail directly through the website. Unless of course it's like a limited window to pre-order. And that would definitely be an enticing reason to get people to buy, right? I'm gonna put a banner up that says you have eight hours left to pre-order, three hours left to pre-order, one hour left to pre-order. But if you, and that's when Big Bad Toy Star would come in. Well, we're offering it for $625 and it's now no longer available anywhere else. But I don't yeah. know if I answered your question or if I just- No, you, de you definitely it, did. But. Cause you brought up a really good point now. I mean, I've talked to some of these, a few of these retailers about that sort of plight that exactly what you referenced, because where do they come into play? The problem, what happens is when you're carrying a product like InArt or J&D or Hot Toys or whatever, they give you like a set price. Like they say, like, mm -hmm. you can price it within this window, right? So they have to price it at a certain amount. So they can only drop the price so, so low, right? And this is due for a, a couple different reasons. InArt wants to sell as many direct figures as possible, clearly, so they can pocket as much as possible. But mm -hmm. they do want to sell some to different retailers just to move more volume and allow it to reach more people. But those retailers are for sure going to have a tougher time moving those figures because all the incentive is to buy directly from InArt. And that's kind of the problematic aspect with being a retailer in this type of situation. Because what I mean, you know, like why why would I buy from anyone else? Like that's unless the price is significantly less, which it's not. Uh, if it's going to be faster, which it's not. If it's going to have more deep, which it won't. Right. So every way in art has driven people to their site, which is the smart business move, is what they should do. But you know, there are loyalists to certain retailers like Kid or Comic Concepts or Collector's Zone or whoever. So they will buy from them because they're loyal to them because they've been good to them. Right. But regardless of that, for the for the collectors out there that maybe are a little more like, okay, I don't really have like a direct loyalty to a shop. I just want to give, buy from the best deal. And like you said, Natalie, um, you know, if you're talking about getting a replacement part, who better than to buy from the source and get a replacement part from the source? Mm -hmm. So that's why in our, uh, this if if this were a thing where they're going to get more world, worldwide licenses, then they're going to take a large chunk of the of the buyers of the collectors because most people provided they have don't have a bad experience, are going to buy directly from NR because all the incentive is there to do so. And that's mm -hmm. that's the so that's the difficult thing for these retailers when we look at those prices, right? Like, you know, it's tough. They're in a tough position. You can't not carry it because if you don't carry it, then you're like, well, people are like, where are you going to like for the people who want NR and want to buy from them? Yeah. But to answer a couple of questions before we move on, like uh, someone was asking me the 5% off thing that applies to the NRD or the payment in full. So whichever option you do, it will be 5% off of that. So if you do the NRD of $90 or whatever, which is 19%, I'm not sure how NR arrived at that number, but it's 19% of the overall cost. Um, it'll give you 5% off of $90. If you do the full payment, it'll give you 5% off of $475. So you get more of a discount if you pay in full. So that's kind of how. I'd, someone asked also, how long will this be up for PL in Art's website? Who knows? Um, I can ask them. I've not heard anything about that. So that could be something like you guys reference, like once in our website sells out, then people go and say, okay, I'll buy from Kit. I'll buy from Josh. I'll yeah. buy from whoever, right? BBTS maybe. Um, that could be a reality. But um, in the meantime- and let's not also forget with yeah. all the other retailers, 
like me, I had a bunch of points saved up on different things. So it's true. Cash out, baby. Because I mean, that's I had stuff left over from my jokers, and I'm like, okay, well, I'm just gonna throw these on something else. So yeah, that's another thing. Mm -hmm. If they're like, if you've been bankrolling a bunch of points, then maybe you will go to some of those. You know, once again, everyone looking for that bottom, uh, bottom dollar. And I and I will say too, Kiko, on that point, like. Um, you know, with with these collectibles, I mean, I, I do think that we're going to find that in our worldwide licenses, I don't think that's going to be a reality for most of their figures. But I guess we'll see. Right. I guess we'll find out. This is the first one right out of how many they've announced. So I think most of them were probably going to be going through someone like Kit for sure, which is great because um, we all have had a good experience as far as I'm aware. But, you know, the direct ones like this, uh, if they can get more of these. That's going to be beneficial for them. But We'll see. Maybe hopefully the buying experience is really smooth. This is my first time buying directly from them. So I have this on pre-order. Kika's got it on pre-order. Natalie's a maybe. She's got to watch the film. But uh, yeah, and people in the chat, let us know, guys, if you're picking up this Dune figure. But I can already tell as soon as Natalie watches it, she's going to run on over, get this t situated, and go ahead and make a spot for it. I know it's going to happen. I believe yeah. in you, Natalie. <laughs> okay. I think so, too. If she's getting Harry Potter, she's going to get this. Yeah. Well, no, I mean, Harry Potter. That's Dune was written so that Harry Potter could run. Exactly. Oh, Dune was written. Dune walked so that Harry Potter could run. Am I saying yeah, that, that right? works? Yeah. Either one works. Yeah, either one's fine. Yeah, Frank Herbert I remember, set the ground for all of this. Maybe I'm revealing my age here, but I remember being in the sixth grade <laughs> reading Harry Potter. And then I remember being in the eighth grade yeah. going to see Harry Potter movies for a school trip. And like, so for so long. Natalie, I'm right there with you. I think we're the same age for at least. Okay. Natalie, they took you to a school trip to see Harry Potter. That's, Absolutely. That's nice. Yes. That's in nice. Brooklyn, New York. This is Let's how go. we did it. <laughs> this is nice. how, I, I think that was teachers just making like a, a business proposition on why it would. The teachers wanted sense. to go see it and they just figured out how. I to think, get the kids because there. we were reading it. We were reading the yeah. books. And so they're like, we're going to take them to go see the movie when it came out. And so we all got to go see it during really? a school trip yeah yeah but that's awesome but anyway guys buy from wherever you see fit do not fomo don't buy this paul if you don't want this paul right. think about it a little bit but for me it's definitely a figure that's going to be staying in the collection for a while just because <laughs> dune 2 was so fucking good but i mean to address that real quick like i'm not waiting for a dune 2 figure from in art i mean maybe they'll do one at some point but i mean i think that's years away probably i mean i think that's you know kiko what do you think so I don't know if this is really a spoiler. I mean, you're on Arrakis and you're around Spice. What do you think is going to happen? Right. It's not. Yeah. If you're around Spice, your eyes turn blue. Spoiler! Oh, my God! No big deal. People complain about the Batman's eyes not being blue enough. Can you imagine if they released season two and they weren't blue enough or whatever? So, eh. I'm not worried about it. Yeah, I think so, too. Under, under I mean, the right lighting, I don't think you can tell. Yeah, and under their eyes are so small, dude. They're six scale. I mean, take your eye. It's already small and shrink it down one six. Like, yeah, no. So uh, we'll see that Darth Vader, though, with the orange eye, the Sith eye. That's pretty cool. That's pretty it cool. Slaps, huh? Yeah, it does slap. It hits different, dude. No printer. But uh, all right, guys, let's move on to the next topic. We're going to talk about Kiko's dream here. <sighs> this because is three Kiko's, in a row. Kiko's I'm really enjoying these art. topics. He's about to suck out, suck off Howard Chan because, uh, <laughs> you know, because, yeah, let's just suck off everybody today because you know what? <laughs> see that? That's can, how you do it, Kiko. Can we please get people to, like, start taking screen captures and snippets <laughs> because there was so much. <laughs> people if they can they can hit screen record all they want they can just rewatch these if they need to obviously. i know but i need i need a meme generator like someone in the chat does this for <laughs> <laughs> i wish the youtube chat allowed for posting of gifts like that kind of like twitch does but yeah. doesn't doesn't quite occur but so kiko now i gotta start with kiko on this one he's been waiting for this since i've known him honestly and the ahsoka wasn't even out then so i would say that i would say that shin hati and balen skull especially shin though shin is the one i can fix her as kiko introduced me to that that uh you know significant trend i mean you don't become the king on threads if you're not fucking following the social media trends so kiko is very excited about this shin hati and i think the community is kiko i think you saw this i got some very very interesting poll results when i ran this mm. um and i asked people and i'll zoom in here i asked people were they going to pick up uh shin baddie and balen skull and of course there was actually 59 percent of people said they were not going to pre-order either figure so I found this very interesting. This is over 1.1K votes, right? And there were some comments and people were riled up like, what the fuck? Why are you guys not like people? You should get whatever you want or don't get whatever you want, right? If you don't like these figures, don't care about them. Do not buy them. But um, like, I, I think the community is still very excited. I think as of now, it's not going to be after I say this, but this is my only 100% liked video in a while. 
I made a preview of these two, Shin Batty and uh, and of course uh, and Balen Skull, and it was 100% like. So the haters who hate me have not quite gotten to that video yet, but they are going to after I after I say this. But um, but uh, so Shin Shin Hati and Balen Skull Kiko, are these characters worth spending six hundred dollars on? Because they're pretty good. What do you think? Fuck yes, they are. And anyone that's voting against what you or anyone voting against that in those polls are Russian bot farms. That's all it is. They're they're fake and they're just she's a Ukrainian actress. This is just Vladimir Putin doing all this, um, just trying to pull this up. Um, I, I just don't believe it. So back to reality. These are 100 percent it. I understand that you have to separate Disney Star Wars from Lucas Star Wars and such, but Ahsoka kind of fits in the middle. It's kind of a blend of everything that's right with Star Wars with a hint of everything that's not. The the plot points that go nowhere, a little bit too overly produced, you know, you can find flaws in everything. Not everything is Dune too, after all. Sure. But these are remarkable figures. And it has nothing to do with the fact that we're finally getting the Shin figure. The Shin figure looks incredible. I think it's one of the best female sculpts that we've seen. I saw someone do like an overlay of her face and it blends right to Ivana and back and forth from between the figure and the real actress. Perfect. The only thing different is that the, the figure's got a little more of a button nose as opposed to the real life actress has a little more of a pointier nose. Not the end of the world. Not as bad as the Yelena nose figure or whatever, but the star, as you have right there, is Balin Skull. Ray Stevenson, RIP. This is your only chance to honor this man posthumously. You're never getting another Balin Skull figure. And I do feel like they are going to take this character and do something more with him. Um, I think Ahsoka 2 obviously is going to explore that. I think there's going to be more media that focuses on that because there's too many threads to pull to follow. It's exciting. I like the plot. And he was the most intriguing, interesting part of that show. Say what you want about the show. Um, it, it's undeniable that those plot points, everyone's like, yeah, this part sucked ass, but wow, Shen and Balin were really cool. That's what the general consensus is for anyone that watched the show. Now, figure-wise, I don't know if you can have one without the other. This is kind of like Han and Chewie. This is kind of like 3PO and R2. If you're going to have one, you kind of have to have the other. Now, I do know that if you are kind of the shippers out there, you can do a Shin and Sabine, and you might be able to do it that way. But I think most people, at least I know, you kind of want them both, master and apprentice. I mean, who knows? There's so much about their backstory that we just don't know that they kind of hinted at that I want to explore and find out further. And to be able to get this in figure form is so fantastic. These look incredible. The Not just the head sculpts, but I think the costumes themselves are some of the better developed costumes throughout Star Wars recently. And I love it. Um, I love that Balin has Shazam's hood, essentially, which I think looks awesome. Um, but man, I'm not going to ever say somebody, hey, you know, get something because it looks cool. But oh, the, these are these hit the Star Wars itch for me. And this, once again, shows without a doubt that the Ahsoka line is the best, visually speaking, Hot toy Star Wars figure line they have ever done. And that is a fact. Wow, really? Okay, so even without the Anakin, because right now, Kiko, you got a new hope. A new hope would like a word, because a new hope is a very, very good figure line. You have a new hope on. There's only like six of those, though. There's only like six a new think, hope think, figures. Think how good those new hope figures are. I mean, you're talking about the definitive they're right version. They're, they're, they're right there. And <laughs> I, I get what you're sure. saying, but they're all the same color palette. You look at the Ahsoka line, you've got oranges, you've got blues, you've got greens, you've got orange or blacks, and all that stuff they pop and I cannot wait to carve out a special spot in my display for those Ahsoka figures. Put Ahsoka the white, go ahead and put Chopper in their Hera. Shoo! They're going to look visually exciting. And I know some people will say, and they call me out, they're like, the way that Dave Filoni does Star Wars is not Star Wars. Absolute abomination to what Lucas created. Then nothing like that. That's his own artistic vision. In Dave's mind, things are colorful. And I think it is a breath of fresh air to my display. And I love to be able to have color because I'm looking at my Marvel stuff and I objectively think they look better. All the Marvel colors. We talked about that thing last week. Yeah. Being able to put those colors, but with Star Wars things, that's fucking awesome. So sign me the fuck up. <laughs> 
There we go. Well, that's well a- as you saw, it was like as soon as it went live, I think like 3.30 Eastern time. Yep. Like, I had it in my cart and pre- pre-ordered at 3.31. You so. had a reel like already created. The I second- did. I knew <laughs> it was coming too. It's yeah, so the like, second that that shit dropped, you had a fucking reel. And I didn't even see the order number when I commented I was being a smart ass, but then I looked like a dumbass yeah. because I was, no. I was like, bro, put his order number. And then it was 8675. What was it? The Tommy 2 <laughs> So he put that in there, and Kiko was like, look at it again. And I was like, fuck, dude. <laughs> I jumped the gun. But Played yourself. You pinned my idiocy. So thank you for that. But um, yeah, that was my fault. So, But uh, yeah, we got some really good chats here. I mean, one comment Roe said stuck out to me. He said these outfits look like they have a Game of Thrones influence. They do. Yeah. Uh, it really does. It does look like very Targaryen armorish with Balin. Um, so yeah, I think this is dope. But Natalie. Kiko said some wild shit right there. He forgot about the Mandalorian line. He forgot about A New Hope, even though they're right. The Mandalorian line has fucking mustard and ketchup troopers. (laughs) It's stupid. But that's the bottom of the barrel. We're talking about Crow Mando, baby. We're talking about uh, Crow Crow Mando. Mando. (laughs) We're talking about we're talking about Blurg. Okay, Blurg. Fake news. Yeah, but uh, there's some other good ones too. But I don't remember all of them. I'm sick. So Natalie. What's uh what's the deal with Balin and Shin Hati? Are we uh are we picking up these two? Are they are they going to that new light uh, lit display there? Because there's some room for those two. I got lots of room, mm-hmm. and I'm tempted. Oh, okay. So I really love the Ahsoka show. I've got quite a few of those figures on pre order because of how much I loved it. Personally, I feel like Ahsoka was uh to me. Maybe not to everybody, but to me, it almost reignited a passion of Star Wars that I think a lot of people were feeling for a very long time didn't exist, right? So there was like, a, oh, Disney's killing Star Wars or every story that comes out is trash. And like then Ahsoka came out and they reintroduced this, this like really... Uh, I don't even know if I want to put a formula because I don't think it's a formula. I think Filoni just did something that he does really well. He did it really good with, with Clone Wars. And I, I truly believe that a lot of people wouldn't love Anakin the way they do today. If it wasn't for Clone Wars, Anakin, um, back when it was first released was, was not a liked character. So many teenagers grew up watching Clone Wars and loving that character as who he was, that now when he appears at Comic-Con or Megacon or any of the cons, and I have his signature right here because I'm one of those people, except I loved him from the movies, um, they go nuts for him. Why? Because of Clone Wars. So I think Filoni did a really good job at interjecting um, that Clone Wars magic that he did so well in the animated series. And that's why it did so well. So for me, I really love the Ahsoka series. So I feel like I'm making space and I have space on the shelf for things. I just don't know what those things are. And Balin, specifically, it's it's a tragic story. It doesn't end well. But at the same time, it's like he was such an iconic character for season one. Him, along with a couple of others, they made the show. So how do you represent the show without him? So I'm really tossed between that. Like you can't really represent season one without him, but you know, he's not going to be in season two or three or four. So do you make space on your shelf when you, when space is finite? So that's where I'm tossed up. Not whether or not he's worth it. Hell yes, he's worth it. Look at him. This guy you made a great is point. pulled out of the screen. Balin kicked Ahsoka's ass so hard. He sent her back to Anakin. That's how much <laughs> he, he, did, did. <laughs> he did. Right. Yeah. Well, it's the, so he, he kind of looks like the Count Dooku 2.0. That's what he looks like to me. He looks like the the reissue, but but done better. That's what that's what Balin Skull is. I mean, he looks like him. Yeah. The guy she told you not to worry about. Yeah, exactly, bro. Exactly. But sorry, Natalie, might, go ahead. But it's true. No, he did kick her ass back get, to the world between worlds. So I might get so much hate for this, and maybe I won't, but I don't know. So Count Dooku is one of the most iconic characters in Star Wars, but I feel like Balin. Ex- exemplified what a not non-villain villain looks like so mm-hmm. much better because Count Dooku I mean I could go into the lore for days but he wasn't really a villain villain he was trying to tell them all along like you're on the wrong side I don't think you realize it but Palpatine is not the good guy like so he was a villain non-villain and I feel like Balin was a non-villain villain at, in that same token and he did it way better in my opinion, right? Anyway, so uh um, I missed the I just, idea of it. Yeah. 
So I would love, I mean, and he looks so good. They did such a good job. I mean, down to the bags under his eyes. If you love this character, get him. Don't freaking wait on it. This is so, I'm so tempted. I just, I know that I only have a few more shelves. Like I literally have two more shelves. They're going in. I'm going to spend probably another 25 hours wiring them and putting them together and doing all the things. But like after that, I'm done. I don't have space. So I have to be very strategic and I'm looking at this and I'm looking at this very hard because both of them are so amazing. But when I look at Shin, I know I don't want Shin. And here's why. Ooh, Kiko's upset. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. Shin for me feels like a Wanda wannabe. And I Ooh, know it's not yeah, the same let's thing. Go. Let's go. But, right to the heart. Right to the heart of Kiko. <laughs> I, nobody loves Wanda. Oh. <laughs> nobody loves Wanda more than me, except maybe Kiko. She's stunning, gorgeous, queen. I There is five shelves ready for Wanda, right? Yeah. I feel like Shin is a, a wannabe Wanda. That's my opinion. Damn. Kiko, do you have a rebuttal? I do. The first appearance, if you're talking MCU Wanda, I'm assuming what you're talking about, right? Yeah. Well, no, okay. and, uh, I mean, not even MCU Wanda. I'm talking about Elizabeth. Yeah, she does look like Elizabeth Olsen. Oh, oh, oh. Correct. When I first saw her in that trailer, I was like, "Why is it? Why is Lizzie Olsen in here holding a lightsaber?" Because it literally <laughs> looked I identical. Yeah. But let's put Lizzie on the side. But go back to Scarlet Witch, MCU Wanda. Wanda wasn't really who she was today until she did Age of Ultron when she was first introduced there. So this is Ahsoka is Shin's uh, Age of Ultron. So let's see how she turns out in Wanda by the time WandaVision. Star Wars version comes out by then. I think that this character has a huge shelf life and potential, and she's a huge popularity uh, at all the different cons. I don't know if you saw my story recently, that time where they brought the little land speeder back yeah. to her. Yep. Very, very cool. She's very, very friendly and very social, um, so that's very cool. But going back to the knockoff Elizabeth, there's only one Elizabeth Olsen. We all right. know that. Come on. Right. But So I mean, that's what, and that's where I'm at. I'm not saying that Shin... Is, but Elizabeth Olsen isn't in Star Wars. So this is, I'll take No, of course. Person. So that's what I'm saying. It's like, I feel like Shin is not, there's nothing wrong with her character. I think just when I was watching the show, I got so stuck on like, wow, they really did this. Like, wow, you can like try to make her, un and I got so like laser focused because I love Wanda. Like you don't understand how much well, I love Wanda. You're preaching to the choir, Wanda. Kiko, Natalie. So, so to me, I was- version of Wanda? I feel like I just got so upset. Like, why did they have to like make her so like Wanda? Like it just ruined her for me. <laughs> I'm probably being really petty. I'm sorry. But for me, I was just really, I was like, Ugh, whatever. Well, she's Every almost like she... Wanda insofar as appearance, right? Though now exactly. like, I, don't, I don't feel like her exactly. character is anything like Well, Wanda. it didn't matter to me. Every time she came on screen, I was like, <laughs> she can't help how she looks. I mean, that's just her <laughs> yeah. face. So. I mean, she could have, well, she does she have that witch. She could have been like, somebody like, else. European <laughs> accent. Yeah, she does. Well, she does. So she, but look, all that aside, all jokes aside, she did a really good job. So for anyone who's not like a weirdo like I am, go for it. She's she's wonderful, great character. I'm just well, like I don't think anyone's asking for pregnant Shinhati photo uh, figures out there. They're they are asking for pregnant Wanda's. So yeah, that's true. There are. I mean, if Hot Toys makes a pregnant Wanda figure, dude, I'll just retire. <laughs> like I'll just be like, I'll just. That's it. That point. Yeah, you might as yeah. well. Yeah. I won't even say it, but Jose, by the way, but in the it, chat, he said she's super nice. She said she rejected going on a date with him when he met her. Wow. Well, at least you shot your shot, bro. I mean, hey, you miss a hundred percent of the shots you don't take. That's what I was going to say. Like that, that, that person got farther than most people would ever do. Most people can't even leave their room to even approach somebody. This person went up to this queen <laughs> and asked, "Will you go out with me?" So, right, exactly. Okay. So I gotta just point out X Man Supreme. This man, I love him. I don't know who you are, but I want to meet you one day. He said. <laughs> Natalie's over here, like you have the same face as someone I love, bitch. <laughs> and but you, you know did what? Natalie. He's kind of right. Like that's kind of a reason. That's why women are awful. Don't. It's, Mark don't even said the same thing, Natalie. What do you? He said, "What does Wanda have to do?" <laughs> like, ask Natalie. Everything, you know? everything, everything. And if you don't get it, talk to X Men. The same, almost identically same eyes. Like, I, trust me, I get Dude, it. If you don't get it, talk to X Men Supreme. He gets I it. Get it. 
There you go. Well, guys, I think we're all likely going to be picking these up. Natalie's just picking up Balin because this is discount Wanda, apparently. But I will say that uh, we're both... and the Scarlet Witch together. It's going to look incredible. Yeah, put Balin and Scarlet Witch together. It's going to look top tier on your shelf. But uh, yeah, I'm going to be picking up these two, so I'm excited about it. But guys, thank you for your thoughts on that one. I got to get to a super chat we had. My apologies for missing this one, Jeff. So sorry. Uh, I was, you know, getting focused on these topics. And again, I'm sick. I have sick brain. So give me give me some uh, benefit of the doubt here. So Jeff said, uh, $10 super chat, by the way. Thank you so much, bro. Kiko should eat his words. Companies shouldn't listen to collectors. You were the one that had the main gripe about not being able to buy directly. Hello, come on, Kiko. It's not it's 10 shots. Nom, nom. I don't. They I'm still did, trying they, to decipher that. What do you, yeah, you, know, what they, do you make of it? I was essentially saying that I got what I wanted. They did listen and they made it direct. And so that's why I was, <laughs> I was, I was going, you know, I was going deep. Well, you so, got a double fist, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, well, so I, maybe I misunderstand what it's saying. Is he Thank talking about the 10 shots you took that, that day on stream? Yeah. I guess oh, they yeah, yeah. I, I will say, like, even Taisha, she she really definitely contributed to that. She signed in as multiple people. And what and <laughs> did she actually? That is irresponsible. She, so, first it was my account and then her account. So, yeah, she double we double paid to, 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 to make you take shots. <laughs> nice. Thank you so much, Ty, for contributing to the channel <laughs> and Kiko's demise. So, yeah, 100%. Poor guy. But, he was uh, like, I, my health, I don't know if I could do this anymore. And she was like, I'm signing it again. <laughs> I, <laughs> now they're like, let's and, fucking and do you know it. That I made up for the other three the next week, right? I know. Yeah, I did. know. <laughs> And, yeah, you know, I, I, but Natalie, to be fair, I had to take some of the fall for that. I had to text Amy and be like, hey, oh, God, it, was, Will, it was all my idea. You. You know, I, I was like, what it is was, now? It was definitely <laughs> my idea to be irresponsible. It so. was not my idea, but I was willing to take the fall for Kiko yeah. for, for my boy. So, yeah, because yeah. Kiko and I are going to go to Cincinnati. And I'm very excited. I think at the that. end of the day, everyone in the chat was just waiting for Kiko to take the fall. Like, literally. Yeah. To I was real close. Like if we, went, if we went another 10 minutes, I probably wouldn't have made it. It was hilarious though, because now you saw Kiko was like, Will, you're one of my best friends. And I was like, thanks, Aww. dude. I appreciate it. He's, he's, I never, he's, never, so never, he's never said that to me about being drunk, but when he was drunk, he was like so nice. And I was like, dude, yeah, let's fucking go. Like so. everybody thinks Kiko is like this really like harsh, like I'm I'm anti everything, but you put a couple shots in him. He's like, listen, guys. Yeah, you're exactly. All, I, like, I love you. Yeah. I love J and D and our all of it. <laughs> Well, well, let's not get too crazy. <laughs> well, when I was at uh, I Kiko's... love buying from Pop Collectibles. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you need in art when you have Pop Collectibles, bro? Come on, right? But uh, yeah, so when I was at Kiko's, Natalie, just you know, he was so nice. He was, you know, him and Amy were always so pleasant. They put me in the pink room, and one of these days I'm gonna meet Amy, and I'm just gonna yeah. just adore Dude, her. She's I a queen it. for sure. Yeah. She's a... oh, she would love you. She would love yeah, you. Guys. She would. She's. Oh my god, I'm gonna have her. I'm going to put her and Ty in a room and just watch magic. L like little sparkles just come out of the door cracks because yeah. I feel like they'd get along so well. Yeah, they definitely would. It definitely I'm would. I'm a girl, <laughs> That's definitely what she <laughs> sounds like. First time I met her too, like Kiko had always done that accent, but I had never heard her actually speak. But then when I met her in person, I was like, oh shit, like that was actually real. Like, like it's, that's actually it's pretty on target. Yeah, it wasn't an exaggeration. Um, It's real. So, but yeah, that's it's wonderful. it's her thing. So that New Orleans uh, accent, so. Yeah. So oh, guys, yeah. Let's... I started I started following her on uh on Instagram. <laughs> oh, did you nice? Okay. She has like twenty thousand yeah. followers, dude. So she just like yeah. fucking eats French fries on TikTok and like She's gets fly thousands as of hell. Like she she literally like breathes like I don't even know the word I'm looking for. Like if you wanna like like experience what class looks like, follow her on Instagram. Like yeah. you you'll sense it. You'll sense it. Well, guys, we gotta continue these discussions here. Um <laughs> Because we got to talk about the Hot Toys level of quality that's been as of recent. I made a poll about this and I sent this to Kiko. And, uh, you know, this is something that I think we need to, to go over here. I made just a brief little graphic just kind of going over what the most recent releases and announcements have been. There have been others. Of course, there's something in between. Batman was like three months ago. So that one's definitely a little bit older. I tried to take some of the highlights as of recent. And I could show you the list for everything that's been released this year. Uh, Shin and Balin uh, are the only two that are announcements. The rest of these are actual releases, so final products that came out looking this good, right? So, of course, we have the Black Adam figure, regardless of how shit the film was. We have Black Adam. We have the Batman, Pattinson, we have which is Midman to Riley. And, of course, we have C-3PO from Turn of the Jedi. Also great. The Darth Vader, which you can see behind me up here, review coming soon. Dude, fucking Grail. Grail, 100%. Definitive version, especially for Kiko. Where's and then we Mobius? have... 
Morbius, right? We had Morbius, which I saw some people are really excited about that Morbius. So the bats, the bats are pretty good. Uh, and of course, we have Mommy Wanda from Multiverse of Madness, which I am on the hunt for. I'm definitely looking for that. So we'll see how that shakes out. And of course, Shin and Balin have been announced and some other stuff. Of course, we had the Superior Suit Spidey, too. Also a really good Spider-Man figure. Hot Toys is in our top. Hot Toys is hot. Everybody's hot right now except J&D. Everyone else is fucking killing it, dude. So Hot Toys, can they sustain this level of quality that they've been displaying recently? Because I got to say, they're like NBA Jam, bro. They're on fire right now. You know, if anyone's played that game when you were on fire, you were unstoppable, dude. You're pretty much like, uh, who's the best player in the NBA right now? Like uh, Luca, maybe? I don't know. Luca's pretty good. Uh, Giannis. Uh, who else? I guess what well, Wemby, right? He's pretty good. So you're one of those players. You're, you're absolutely on fire right now. So Kiko, got to ask you the question, bro. Can Hot Toys sustain this? Are they running on fumes right now? Are they are they are they straight gas, as the kids say? But is that gas is is it running on E soon? What do you think? First off, you mentioned J and D. J and D is the Homer Simpson meme backing into the uh into the <laughs> into the shrubs. Okay. That's essentially what J and D is. They're like, we don't want to do six scale anymore because we suck and we don't know our audience. Goodbye. How, however, Kiko, I got to show you something real quick because I I created I did I did create a topic for this. This oh, is sold out. Fuck. Here sold we go. out. Oh, sure. Okay. <laughs> when you uh, only make 17 of something, it sells out. Yeah. I mean, remember Morbius was waitlisted too, and everyone gave me shit for that, but whatever. Well, that's a grail. It's different, but sure. Sure. Is it, so is this Bruce Wayne. So once all the staff bought theirs from J&D, maybe the few of the shills decided, oh, I'll go ahead and grab one too. So they maxed out at 20. Sure. Great. Yeah. Now, uh, looking at this photo, oh, if Black you... Adam really is a grail. No, I was going to say, you can go ahead and move that one off. That's a piece of shit. The, uh... No, 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 no. <laughs> like, I'm calling I, it. I, I've no. said it before. Yeah, Natalie said I'll it was going to be like $600, so she's Watch. pretty bold. Just you wait. Just you wait. Anyone who owns that figure? It's crazy that you think the rock at $600 start. is expensive because I'm pretty sure I paid more than that in tequila shots that night. So. <laughs> Kiko is still well, upset about that $17. Should've, you should have should've better should've. invested in his figure and not his, his booze because yeah, probably. that's grail. Can you hear so, the babies? Look, even yes, your can, dogs, the babies even your right dogs now? agree. Your dogs agree with well, me. Well, they heard you saying that The Rock was going to be a grail. And like, oh, <laughs> you upset them, Natalie. Yeah. They don't like or, that. Or they agree with you. Just Maybe. Saying. Go, ahead, go, ahead, go ahead. But what do you think, though? What do you think about this? So I'm, you mentioned, that, I believe, at the top of the show that we're in a real golden age of collecting. And I actually mentioned that in my latest video today about being in a golden age of collecting. And... We have gotten to the point where we are so spoiled at how good some of these things are that when they do have a misstep, the, the, the misses are few and far between. I understand Nick and Riley are trying to work to get their Toby the way they want it to be, you know, justice for black suit Toby, all that stuff. But there have been some really, really good pieces out there. And guys, here we go. Let me go ahead and jump that giant in our cock <laughs> <laughs> like a sandworm. <laughs> that looked like a subway it, it, foot long, but thank yeah. You. Um, it's buy one, get one, by the way, if you use the subway app. Buy one, get one for a foot long? Yeah. Just no, like, for, know, for sand cocks. Is oh, <laughs> for the sandworms? <laughs> no, for, for the, the, the subway foot long, buy one, get one. We're getting off topic. That's wild, dude. I need <laughs> not a sponsor, but I need to get one of those. No, that's the, yeah. that is the topic. What do you think about <laughs> yeah, sand cock? Yeah, we're changing it. <laughs> sand cock? Sand cock is the uh, topic? No, subway, bro. Not sand cock. How do, where, where were I going with this? Sub cock. Yeah, that's the. Oh, oh, I was getting ready to suck off in. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, hot, toys, hot Toys <laughs> is putting out some incredible stuff. And art is putting out some credible stuff. We are spoiled as collectors at this <laughs> moment. We really, really are. For all the people that say, well, I can't wait to get my in art Batman and my Hot Toys Batman to see which ones. They're both incredible pieces, objectively. We don't know yet, officially, because the in art one still hasn't shipped. But objectively, they probably are pretty fucking good. But you look at this murderer's row, essentially, of hit after hit after hit, miss with the rock, hit after hit. I mean, they are really good. And even when some of the things are a little off, such as the hair on Han, okay, we can still kind of look past that because there's a really good sculpt underneath it. But what, what's the official question? The level of quality. I think they're only going to get better. Now, with all the people that were freaking out about the Toby and freaking out about some of the other inaccuracies of things that missed, like the Valkyrie and Gore. 
keep in mind that these are at like an 18 month delay. So everything that moves forward, once they started introducing the PERS eyes and things like that, the USB sabers, and like now we're starting to see what was really cooking. We're going to start getting some artisan figures. We're going to really start to see, I think you're going to see some really special pieces. I mean, the, the Padme turned out better than I think most people thought. I think most people are looking at everything that's coming out right now and saying, wow, from prototype to production, not much of a dip. Looks pretty fucking awesome. And if we can keep that up, we are going to be spoiled as collectors. But then we need to make sure that we are smart in that and saying, okay, everything is going to look amazing. Do you need to have everything? Do you need what what do you need to do to make sure that you're responsible in your collecting game? Because that's something I've really trying to been focusing on right now. I have so many mid figures that I'm kind of going through and deciding to move on because ooh, I'm looking at let's just say when that in art Paul gets here, you can't put that sitting there next to a toys battalion figure and be like, Oh, these are the same type of figure. Mm -hmm. No, it, it's going to distract from how good the Paul is. And so you're going to need to start curating a little bit more. I, I'm talking to myself. I'm going to make, need to make sure I'm starting to curate some of the things in my collection because I don't want nothing detracting from these incredible pieces. So I think the best, I sound like a campaign person. I think our best days are ahead. You know, the, <laughs> the future is bright. State of the Union is good. Have you just sucked off all these companies? But yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, 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 but in seriousness, I think there are some very, very cool things coming. I can't wait. Um, if we can just get things a little bit quicker, that's my only gripe right now. If we can just get things a little bit quicker, but if this is the final product, damn, we're in for a re we're we're in for a nice treat. Well, Kiko, you can just you know use your collection to fund your collection, dude. So just take those mid. Yeah, yeah, just just take those uh things and you know. Get about twenty five percent what you paid for them. That's exactly. well, pretty much, yeah. Like, point, remember so. when we first met, dude? You were like, I took a fucking bath on those Power yes. Rangers. Yes, There's three zero Power Rangers. That was nothing compared to kind of what some of the things are right now. But um, yeah, yeah. Oof. Well, Power dude, Rangers wait till you bad. get that Darth Vader, the Kenobi one. You're gonna be pretty happy, bro. Like I said, fix the cape to your liking. You'll like it. Mm -hmm. Just you know, maybe get a different cape if you want. But you know, it's gonna be it's gonna be a grow. And then uh, you know, you got Return of the Jedi, of course, the future. And of course, you know, we're both getting C three PO. So yeah. I'm pretty excited about that. So. And uh, Natalie, I got to let you jump in here. I'm going to grab you know, my thing out of the dryer real quick. Oh, yeah, I don't want to burn the house down, Will. Make right sure you, back. yeah, click that lint holder, holder out, dude. Yeah, that lint holder. Yeah, that's pretty, it's pretty great. So Natalie, that's, keep going up talking about that before the show. You Guys, PSA, you got to make sure you clear the lint out of your dryer. Apparently, it can start a fire and burn your house down. That's what my dad always told me. So pretty important. So I'm sure, Natalie, you or Ty do that one of you. You see, both seem pretty responsible, but I still got to i still gotta ask you natalie so the scarlet witch is on here she's among your favorites she's the real scarlet witch the real wanda and you got black adam the grail that you said is going to be a future grail you've gone on record and of course we got the batman c3po would you have gore the god butcher though mm, that's i don't feel as great about that one kiko's not here so we can take the shot at mm -hmm. that figure but uh, natalie what do you think the quality hot has been putting on display recently do you think they'll maintain this standard they've set for themselves lately all right so gore the god butcher was released a lot or was revealed so there's reveals and there's releases it was revealed a long time ago i don't think they're going to be revealing a lot of things like that anymore and that's maybe i'm totally wrong but i'm going to go on record saying it like i really do not think they're going to reveal a bunch of characters with exposed joints unless they are uh what is that show with the uh the Pirate King. Oh, it's about uh, One Piece? Yeah, One Piece, right? So there's going to be some shows where they're targeting a specific uh, audience that doesn't have like a prerequisite uh, expectation of hot toys. I don't think they're going to do this anymore. Why? Because in art is a real thing. J&D is a real thing. If they're going to, and they don't need to try and compete. Let me just say that right now, right? I don't think they need to compete because they are the king. They are the goat. Anyone who thinks they're not the king, they're not the goat, you're, you're kind of just fooling yourself, right? They have very good quality. They are really good with their materials, but they don't have the licenses that a million and 50 people want. They don't have the turnaround times that a bazillion and 50 people want. And they don't have the expedited process for the painting and the applications and all the other things that we demand now. We're used to it. So until they get those three things, they're not the GOAT. In art will always be like the, the, the expectation. Now we're just comparing. That's what we do. 
right? That's what we do now. We say, this is the goat, but we want the goat to be like this. It's like, we all buy Nikes, but we want them all to be Jordans. And like, just because it's a Nike versus a Jordan, they're very similar, but they're not all going to be the same. So um, I'm probably going off on a tangent. Anyway, my the, the point that I'm trying to make is, I don't think that they're going to come out with a lot of things that are subpar anymore. I think at, at this point, everything they do, they do with intent and they do with um, uh, almost a, a direct targeted approach to show you why you're buying their thing. I don't think Marvel is going to be a protected license forever. Marvel is not something that is they're struggling, right? They're 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 bleeding money from a lot of different places. There's a lot of places where they they should be doing better and they're not. So, what are some easy ways for them to kickstart the revenue? Toys, toys, uh, clothes, expanding licenses. Those might be easy wins. So, I think if there's any place that the organization says, you know what, where can we make more money? They're going to start at licenses, and if they play their cards right, they might get a license but they, they need to show consistency and they need to show quality. So I think Hot Toys knows that. And I don't know if there's a lifetime agreement or if there's something that is in the description of their contract that says that they could potentially expand uh, out to other organizations. But I think right now they're trying to show, look, we're just as good and we don't cost as much. So from my stance and what I think, they're going to hit 10 out of 10 out of 10 out of 10 from here moving forward because they have something to prove. They can't afford to lose a license because a lot of people aren't even buying Marvel right now. It's like everything has shifted to Star Wars. And if they lose their Marvel license, that's like 50% of their business. Um, so, yeah, the, the level yeah. of quality is going to have to be sustained. They don't have a choice because... I mean, I'm not I'm not saying I know anything. I, who am I? I'm nobody. I'm just a person at the end of a camera 50 billion miles away from all these people on the on the stream right now. But from my from where I stand, there's not a whole lot that says Marvel is committed to Hot Toys so much that they could never go anywhere else. And if they ever decide to, I mean, I'm sure their lawyers could make it happen. So <laughs> quality is gonna be critical. And if you've got people, or or not people, if you've got characters like Dune and Gandalf and Harry Potter and Batman and all these coming out, if I was the businessman with the big suitcase, I'd say, hmm, that seems like a better, that seems good, I want in on that. So I think they're at this point, they have to, to, to push out this level of quality. So I'm excited for it. I think we're all gonna win just because they need to up their game. So yes, can they sustain it? Of course they can. Does Is it going to cost more money? Yes, it will. Are we prepared to pay more money? Fucking yes, I am. <laughs> Are you? I am. Don't complain about it. Don't <laughs> complain about it. Like if they start raising their prices, but figures are coming out like these six that are on the screen right now, stop complaining because that that's how we get there. If you're all complaining about, well, it's $10 more or $5 more or $20 more, then of course you're going to get lower quality products. We have to be willing to pay for what we want. And quite yeah. frankly, if every release comes out like these four that you've got five on the screen, yes, shut up and take my money. Well, Natalie, you make some really excellent points, you and Kiko both. And these are definitely conversations that we've been having over the last like year or even two years. Because, you know, a question that I had always raised was, would you want less characters and higher quality releases or more characters and maybe some mid quality? And I think what you're starting to see is Hot Toys take on less of those sort of unessential characters and just do uh, more of the important ones, but just make them fucking awesome. And that's kind of what I've always been a, 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 a you know, proponent of. I would say, okay, like, let's make the characters that are really important to people and really make them as good as possible instead of trying to make every character under the sun and just kind of lowering the quality of everything. So that, that to me, I think is, you know, a worthwhile endeavor and a worthwhile pursuit. But I do think that Hot Toys is going to keep this up because yeah, I think the market will demand it. You know, I'm happy that, you know, in our Hot Toys can be in different sort of categories that people want to perceive it that way. But at the end of the day, there's still six scale figures and there's still a finite budget for collectors that you can only commit to so many places. So Insofar as they're competing in that way, 
Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I think that this for sure is a very exciting development and they're doing some amazing things that, you know, like, like you said, Kiko, what they've done with the Darth Vader, which they've done with Grand Inquisitor and other figures. Sure. But you know, that light up feature with the, with the control box, that's, that's a huge step, bro. I can just tell you, I mean, it's not perfect, but you'll see in the review I put out, like it's, it definitely helps. It's nice, man. And you know, imagine what people would really pay if Hot Toys said, okay, next Darth Vader, real leather. Like that's going to be something that's probably going to cost you a significant amount more. Maybe it's 50 to 75 or even a hundred dollars more. But at that point, if it's Darth Vader, eh, I mean, it could be worth it. So I think Hot Toys will continue this and they're doing some very exciting stuff right now. So I'm excited. I hope everyone else is excited. In art's exciting. There are other companies out there too. Third party. Some of them are doing some really exciting stuff. So um, but Black Adam is going to be a grill. I'm putting out there. <laughs> Black Adam. He could be. Kiko's like, nope, no, nope, not happening. But it, uh, is. it is. There's no way it's not. I'm promising you. I mean, I the swear. movie is so trash though, Natalie. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Watch. So the day that, that it starts selling for $600, one of you guys is going to buy me something. I don't know what it is, but I'm just going to call it now. Ego will buy you a $17 shot. How about that? Fair. Fair. <laughs> How about that? That's fair. That's fair. I will By buy way, you a $17 shot of something other than Terramana. Kiko, you missed it while you were cleaning out the dryer, but we did reference this figure. You know, this is one that was recent that, you know, Natalie said we're going to see less of these Gore the God Butchers moving forward, but uh, I guess we'll see. But yeah, I'd take it. pretty sick. It is pretty. I mean, the rest of the figure, take off the arms. The rest of the figure is great, bro. All know. right. So the next time that they release a figure that has these sorts of horrific joints, <laughs> then add me on that stream because okay. then I can eat my words. But I really do think those days are gone. I well, don't think I needed you, back. Natalie, here with me when Kiko and I were debating back and forth. And, oh, no, uh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't dare. He's very intimidating and scary no. when he's defending joints. All he does is no. suck people off, Natalie. He's not. Exactly. Like, I don't, <laughs> don't, don't, don't want to have to fight that. Tonight, so. How am yeah. I going to fight that? I'm going to say, no, that's not true. And he's just going to sit there and shove dicks down his throat. He's a lover, like, not what, a fighter. How, how can yeah. I defend against it? It's true. Natalie <laughs> speaks truth. Yeah, she does. Lisan Agaib. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that's what I was thinking too, but I couldn't remember how to fucking say it. So, but uh, yeah, he has it. the best memory of anyone I've ever watched. Wadi. Ever. <laughs> like I've watched him talk about shows that are like ten years old, and he remembers exact quotes. And I don't know if he's googling them on the fly, but I now believe that he just has that bank of a memory. That that just shows you like my mind is full of things that don't matter. Like start asking <laughs> me things that really do matter, and you're gonna see me freeze up. He did a so, whole uh, Beauty and the Beast monologue on on right. on uh, Instagram and TikTok. So guys, you check that out. That was pretty cool. That was scripted though, right, Kiko? I'm pretty sure. I mean, it's the actual... Uh, right. But you didn't just have it memorized. I did have it memorized. I'll do it right now if you want. <laughs> Dude, okay, now it was a run out of time, but that's pretty Once impressive. Once upon a time <laughs> in a faraway land, oh my God. prince lived See, in a shining castle. Really crazy, Natalie? Like, Actually, like, he I, still, I still haven't done the Optimus Prime one that I'm planning on doing when he does in the age of extinction we bus off that's really you need exciting. to voice over children's books but we'll talk about that. that at another point that would be great kiko you, you've already done voiceover work before haven't you <laughs> yeah so it's pretty cool but i want the big deals now yeah i barely even have a voice right now so i'm just, <laughs> i'll I'm wait just for the by. i'll wait for the in art I'll, <laughs> yeah, I'll wait for the i'll wait for the in art voiceover <laughs> yeah <laughs> but uh guys let's move on to our next topic we got a little bit of time here hopefully to get to one or two more so i, I want to get to this pre-order thing because this is something that i've started to notice in recent times because you know natalie I, I don't know if you and i were communicating that much we weren't i don't know if we were friends at that point a couple years ago but essentially the pre-order process was very different during covid and post-covid times people it was the no po age right everyone was saying don't pre-order you're going to pay a lot more if you pre-order just wait get things cheaper later um and now things have started to shift it as uh as was written and as was told essentially that this was going to be essentially the the change that was going to be happening so i want to bring up just some examples here of uh, so you know some of the examples we just showed right so of course batman that's one, the patented Batman, the Min-Man, as some would call him. He's officially waitlisted. Uh, the figure that everyone wants, Gore the God Butcher, officially waitlisted. <laughs> you know, you're starting to see Black Adam is waitlisted as well. Because he's a uh, grail, goes, obviously. Yeah, he's a grail, exactly. And, uh, you know, you got all these different figures, the Scarlet Witch, the Deluxe version, and the Collector's Edition. You can see him on the waitlist for Mommy Wanda Deluxe. So uh, all these figures are officially waitlisted. So... Uh, this could, I think this is very clearly an indication that Hot Toys has and Sideshow are limiting the amount of figures that they're producing to sort of match the demand that they're anticipating for those figures. But what's yeah. what's happening for most figures nowadays 
is that once they actually release, they're sold out by that point. Or they're in stock for a little bit, like Moon Knight, maybe a week or two, and they're gone, right? So it's really not long. C-3PO is still in, uh, up for pre-order on Sideshow. I'm interested to see once he actually gets to the shore here and you know and starts shipping from Sideshow, is he going to stay in stock for long? Um, because nowadays, like I said, things are selling out. And uh, I think collectors seem to be pre-ordering a bit more than they were prior. So Kiko, I got to ask you the question here, man. Um, is this something ultimately that I think collectors are, are re-embracing the pre-order process here? Because I think whatever Sideshow and other retailers have done, it's starting to work to build a, a little bit of sense of scarcity and uh, you know get people to pre-order again. Is, is that kind of what you're noticing as well? It is. And I'm happy for that to be the way. I, I really am. And rewind it back maybe a year and a half ago, it started with the Clone Trooper. And I was on this stream saying... Y'all get plenty of those. Wait list my ass. I can't wait to see when so many are in stock. These are going to be going away on the BOGO sales, blah, blah, blah. You'll get your clone trooper. How many people got their clone trooper? Not a lot of people. But after that one, everyone's like, whoa, maybe I need to take this a little bit serious because things would start to go wait list really quick. But then they would have some pop back in and then pop back out. But a majority, once they're gone, they're gone. If I were to pull up my wait list of things that I have on there that I hope converts that have been well released and just never have, they never ended up coming back in stock or anything like that. There's a lot on there. And I'm happy because that is the only way. And plug once again for my latest video about mistakes I've made as a collector. Make sure to watch that after this is one of the things I used to do is kind of gauge some of my mis some of my mistakes I made would be gauging you know figures on what retail is and then what it's going to be later on because before the pandemic prices held pretty steady during the pandemic and after it cratered and you're seeing people sell off things for quarters of what they paid and not that this is something you're supposed to get into to make money by any means these are all depreciating assets we've said that hundreds of times but it is nice to know that there isn't just a bazillion of these things sitting out there. It's, I've said it before and I stand by it. I like having things that other people don't have. You know, there is something to be able to say, oh, this is a limited piece, an exclusive piece. This is a high, it, if you're going to use the term high end collectible, you don't want it to be readily available to everyone. I think that there is something to that, to where people say, oh, I like this exclusivity. Case in point, your special edition deluxe Darth Vader that you can only get through Sideshow. There's yeah. only so many of those. And they shipped first because you pre-ordered it. What do you know? And it was a limited pre-order window. That's the way it should be done. If you're serious about a certain figure, then let's go and put your pre-order down and put your money where your mouth is and then wait for it to come in. If you're not, then we'll figure it out when it does release. If it's still around, you can get that. That's the way I gauge it. If it's something you can't live without, just pre-order it anyway. What what harm is there? This idea of hoping to be able to find it below retail, I just don't think that's going to be happening anymore moving forward. I mean, granted, there's still plenty of things out there. People are fire sailing, you know, just trying to make ends meet. I get that. But this idea of, oh, I'll just wait for it to hit collector's hands and I'll get it for 50% off. I don't think that's going to be happening anymore because there's not going to be as many of them out there. So if you really want one, you better pre-order it or pay for the extra bit. Yeah, because I think Kiko, the only way that you'll find that type of deal like you used to is if you are willing to buy used from another collector. Like maybe you wait for a while, there's a newer version of that figure that comes out or maybe just someone wants to offload it in an emergency and you get lucky and you happen to see it. Um, you know, I see, see the chat referencing too. So pop culture is for the people that don't mind waiting fucking forever and just getting the figure a little bit cheaper because pop culture does tend to have things that are sold out in the States. Uh, they just They're like the last line of defense. They sure. are the last line. So if you missed out, like for example, Mommy Wanda is still there, right? So if you're looking for her, that's where you can find her. Just be prepared to wait another four to five months, maybe. It's like it's just, but as long as that's okay with you and you just want it for a retail brand new, that's where you would go. Um, so, but yeah, I mean, a lot of these figures are waitlisted and it's it's very, I like it too, Kiko, because it gives everyone enough time to get it if you want it. And that's kind of, it's very similar to what yeah. Inart's doing too, right? Like if you want that Paul, you have plenty of time to pre-order. And then if you decide not to get it, it could sell out. And then that's it. And I like that. I like that, you know, it's not going to be available for six it years. It forces you to start weighing the cost of a, yeah. okay, I there's only so many I can get. 
let's just see if this is a figure I really want. You have a couple days, maybe a couple weeks. And you're like, ooh, I can't live without this figure. I'm going to pre-order it. But if it's the one that you're still going back and forth six months later and it's still available, you probably didn't want it in the first place anyway. Yeah. Like, I will say, though, my yeah. my Darth Vader was a wait list because I was in the no post strategy at the time. And I was like, I'll get that Vader. Like, it. I'll just wait too. for it. I was too. I was like, I'll just wait for it. I'm not going to pre-order it. And then eventually the special edition went on wait list. And I was like, fuck, dude, maybe I should mm-hmm. go on the wait list. And then I went on the wait list and finally converted. I was like, I'm not taking chances with this shit. I'm just going to pre-order it. And I did my wait list converted and I got it. But um, yeah, you know, that I think that was like right near the end of the do- of the no post uh, stage. I feel like the Darth Vader. Um, and uh, that's, was, was, you know, you can still find it in certain places for sure, but that Vader, especially the special edition, that one is waitlisted and gone, right? It's, it's you know, you can't find that special edition unless you go buy it from Tim Sen or something for $500. So it's like, um, again, that was always the thing that I've referenced too. Vader would be the figure. Like if Vader's the, this the DX Vader, if that's the one that people decided to, to no po on and it sells out and you have to pay one and a half, two times retail for it then that's going to be the one that hurts people. And that's going to be the one to make everyone sort of be like, okay, maybe I'll start pre-ordering. But Natalie, I want to ask you the question. Um, are, are you, are you, do you think collectors are embracing this pre-order strategy? Are you embracing it again? I think all of us have sort of, Sideshow is sort of, and the rest of the retailers have gotten us back into that mindset. But what are your thoughts? I think this is the best thing that could have happened for this co- this hobby. And I think for a while there, everybody said, well, for collectors, this is the best thing that could have happened to us, um, that they are so cheap now. And we quickly realized that it doesn't necessarily equate to a win for us later on in the game. So in the beginning of the game, buying it, that's the beginning of the game. Sounds great. But when you go to resell it, it, it there's no value. There's nothing left, right? It's not worth what you paid for. So it does two things. One, it makes me question whether or not I want to buy that 2.0. And two, it makes me question whether I want to sell my 1.0. Because if I sell my 1.0, I'm only making half of what I paid for it. And I'm no longer using my collection to pay for my collection. And a, a lot of people were doing that. I think that's what enticed collectors to join the hobby to begin with. It's like the more the more it was acceptable to say, hey, if I buy this uh, Captain America Civil War in two years, it'll be worth at least $50 more than what it was. And then I could buy the newest one. That doesn't exist anymore. And so I think a lot of people are second guessing whether or not they want to buy the, the latest and greatest. Like, should I wait? The should I wait game is is so much bigger now and i think that's why people have stopped buying so if if they introduce and i think that's what they're doing now they're they're taking a stance they're saying i said this a long time ago maybe you guys remember maybe you don't but the company needs to take a stance and i think that's what they're doing they're taking a stance on how many of the things they're going to release i don't think they did that for uh, c3po because it's c3po and they knew everyone would buy it but for most of these other characters, right, take a stance. We're not going to produce that many. We're going to produce as many as we produce, as many as we think are going to get sold. Um, Josh from Comic Concepts, I've seen him on your show plenty of times, and he has said this numerous times, and I feel like he has been spot on every single time. Nobody wants to hold dead stock, so they're not going to just produce it in mass quantities. Like, that's why I know we joke around, but I truly believe that that uh, Dwayne the Rock Johnson eyebrow, like that alone is what is going to make Black Adam a grail. You're never <laughs> going to see that again. He's never coming back. And it's done. Like, watch, that's going to be a thousand dollar figure one day. And I'm going to be sitting here like, you knew it was a grail. Why didn't you buy it? And I didn't buy Nico, it, whatever. Dude, if Natalie's right, that could be big. I swear. That's it's going to be. But at the end of the day, I think all of these figures, are we embracing pre-order? Yeah. If you're not, get the freak on it. Get on it. <laughs> Natalie, don't you live in Florida near Orlando? I do. I cannot wait to meet you at Disney Springs to toast yes! with you. Yes. Uh, $17 <laughs> shot. My choice, not Terramana. And I hope you're wrong. And I hope you're wrong. <laughs> But we'll see. Well, by the way, okay. if, you, if you're in Orlando, I will be there because of course, that, I don't of course, miss an opportunity. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I don't miss an opportunity to be in Orlando because a mingle, Natalie, if you will. What'd you say? A mingle. 
Yeah, exactly. Exactly. A mingle, a collector's mingle, like the old show used to be. I, but, uh, I literally held a spot for you in the line for Anakin, just in case you showed up. And you nice. Know, that's, that's a see, real one. Natalie is a real one, dude. Natalie's a real one. I, Natalie, I really wanted to. This tattoo, I'm almost done. Finally, I have one more. Show. I know. But, uh, it's been great. But I do want, Natalie, I was going to ask you, Kiko, we got to figure out the dates for July, by the way. People won't know what the fuck we're talking about. But there's an event called Florida Supercon in July that I think would be really cool, Natalie, to go to. It has Ashley Johnson from The Last of Us. She's going to be there. Hey, so. you've got, you've always got my participation. But okay. during MegaCon, it was funny because I told Ty, I was like, hey, I think Will's coming. So she literally bought her place in line. So that way, in case it was Will and me, she could like give her place to Will. Nice. And then, <laughs> so we we literally stood in line in, in anticipation of you. Because nice. we're, rock, we're rock hard Will Fox vacation fans. Thank um, you. I appreciate it. I don't know why I chose the term rock hard. But, <laughs> I mean, you know. hey, I, you know, I was going to roll with it. You know, it's, hey, it's fine. Hey, I mean, Kiko's been sucking it. everyone off. I mean, it's just that. Exactly. Show. It's fine. This, this is the stream you have. You chose this stream. Yeah, it's true. We, I chose this panel and we, this is what we ended up with. But uh, but yeah. I do believe. Yeah. So as far as embracing pre-order. So, yes, I think if you have not already come to the realization that the days of like waiting for it to be on discount are done. Listen and heed the warning. This C-3PO is probably one of the last, unless it's, I mean, unless they are coming out with like the ultimate character that they know a billion and five people are going to buy, it's not happening anymore. C-3PO is probably the last one that you're going to be able to just willy-nilly order, order whenever. I don't even think this one, Natalie. I don't even oh, think it this is. one's... I don't think it's going to sit around forever. I think this one's going to be sold it's out. It's still up. It's still up. And still it's up really for now. But I think I think it's going to. I think it, they're going to. I think they're going to waitlist it. Rel so like, I, I I don't think it's going to sit around forever. I literally have it in my cart, but I've not I've not pushed by. Same. Be same. But but I have a reason. So my reason is because on Sideshow you get fifteen percent off a purchase for active duty or oh i know because the teachers get that too so i know i have right. that yeah. so i'm literally waiting for it to go in stock because as soon as it does i get to use my veteran discount and then oh. i get 15 percent off so watch me get screwed and be like oh, i'm sorry sold out and then i'm screwed but either yeah. way i'm I'm taking a chance i'm risking it all yeah we'll see i am too but when that thing hits low stock and people start posting about it on the groups i'm going to be i'm going to be panicking so. Well, that happened with Darth Vader, and I, I took no more chances. As soon as as soon as I saw it hit low stock, I bought it. Yeah. And then, like five days later, it went back on pre order, and I was like, ah, whatever. Yeah. I was. But now they're all waitlisted. Anyway. They're all waitlisted now. So exactly. Yeah. yeah. I mean, so, like, I'll, I'll chase it, but that's it. Yeah, I'm waiting on mine to get here, but at least I secured mine. So my C3PO, um, I will get it. I'm not gonna let it slip by me, but. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> embracing pre orders, guys. You, we should be thanking our lucky stars we're back in this place. This is the only route back to collector success. If you ever want to like have that time again where it's like, oh, I pay for my collection with my collection, this is how we do it, right? So yeah. we have to, we have to pre-order. And if you don't, then you lose out and done. I, I'm all for it. Buy it or get off the pot. <laughs> there you go. There you go. From a rock hard Will Fox vacation fan. You guys heard it here Hell first. Yeah. McCoy Culture, Josh McCoy, thank you so much for a 499. He said, whenever you are in Orlando, let me know I'm only on our dude. Of course. Shut up, McCoy. Josh, man. Sorry. He was supposed to meet up with us last time, but I forget what happened. We were doing something, but he was supposed to so Josh, next time, bro, hundred percent, bro, you're meeting up with us. And I think Well, um, I mean, hey, if you're in Orlando, like see I've got a bunch of D if anybody has if anybody is close to Orlando and you're on detox, I got a bunch of detox I gotta get rid of because I got these now. Ooh, so Kiko is an expert on that. He got rid of yeah. all of his. He and Amy, but yeah. Yeah, McCoy. I don't know who you are, but hey, you sound cool. <laughs> yeah, Josh is awesome. Yeah, you, you would love him. Yeah, he's super cool. Uh he's been on the show, I think, a couple times. But yeah, Josh is a Florida resident. And he's awesome. So he'll meet up with us next time. Worst case, Kiko, maybe we plan to go see Natalie. Halloween Horror Nights was really fun, bro. That was really cool. So well, maybe. I, I love me a good Halloween. As you went to Nashville Nightmare with us, you know I love a good Dude, Halloween. Nashville Nightmare. Was okay, awesome. can we can we put it on the books right now? Like it, Halloween is my birthday. I literally that is my birthday. So okay. Will, Kiko, come on, get get. New Orleans is like the the city of the dead. So I'm sure you're, you're a woman. New Orleans, yeah, I'm or sure. Orlando. What are we talking about? 
Yeah, Amy. Amy. Well, Amy would. Love Amy is not from New Orleans. Yes, yeah, she is. Well, you're saying. Well, yeah, she's from New Orleans, but I. But that's what I'm saying. <laughs> oh, dead Halloween. Amy. Yeah, okay, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's. But anyway, so yeah, but we we can plan something for sure because I'm down. You know, I'm down. But uh, luckily, we ran out of time for Kiko because we were going to talk about J and D topic. Thank so, God. But, but uh, no, it honestly, it was on the list. This is a backup topic, but we just don't have enough time to get to it. But we did have one good question. It wasn't a super chat, but. Uh, and there's a lot of good comments, guys. It's always a little bit challenging. But someone asked about 303 with Black Adam. Um, it was Tragedy Tales. Yeah. So should I use 303 on my Black Adam? Do you guys have any experience with that? I haven't used 303 ever. Kiko, have you used I, it? I have 303 wipes that I use on my pleather figures, if you want to call it that. Yeah. I also have air conditioning, and I don't live in a heavy humid it's going to vary by region. That's really what it comes down to. Like I don't have a single flaking issue outside of my win my winter soldier, because that was a user error on my end. And I bought that used as well. So it came from someplace else. Um, but you kind of wipe it on with a three Oh three wipe and that's yeah, it. Yeah. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, oh, wow. I wouldn't use it though. Like, so I'm not an expert, but from what I know about three Oh three, it's only effective on real leather. Mm. So if you there are pleather you, versions though, there's a 303 leather and a 303 pleather. Like I'll I might okay. post it in a minute. I, I don't know where it's at. Somewhere sitting around here. But yeah, definitely. I've used, look, it, I've used it for a while. I I put it on my Wanda figures. If that tells you anything, so I trust it. Yeah, look, definitely look at at which one you're using. So and you know I've always wondered about that because I've had figures. It's every couple for, months, just from time to time. I've had figures for like forever, and they've never like I've got my um his jacket his leather jacket not a single peel not a, a split nothing and i pose him all the time so like mm -hmm. i don't know if it's like a humid really it's, your it's, house honestly it's a humidity thing like you might think you need to like spray it with chemicals when really you need a hum dehumidifier mm -hmm. so i would look into that because that spray is fine but i think what you probably really need is a dehumidifier yeah, I use one. It's right over here. And it's great. It uh you just empty it each day when it's you know filling up and it works great. Keeps yeah. your humidity levels at a good level. Where's I have a look? Oh yeah, here's my little clock. So this gives you like, you know, it just a little reading of what your humidity. Mine's a little bit high right now, 42. Normally it's like 30 to 5, something like that. Right. But yeah, yep. but you know, it's not bad. Yeah, mine is always between 37 and 45. And I've had these for years. I've had Yondu since it came out. Beautiful, perfect oh, jacket. Nice. Yeah, yeah. unless you live in the rainforest, you should be fine. Yeah, because Natalie, you're in Florida. It's super humid. And it's super humid yeah. in Maryland. Maryland's super yeah. humid. So yeah. Yeah. So it sounds like maybe a humidity thing. Yeah. So just check on that. But I, I probably wouldn't use three or three person. I mean, I haven't used it. So I'm, again, I'm not an expert either. But uh yeah. So anyway, guys, we are gonna wrap it there. We've run out of time for this evening. So I appreciate it. Hey, can you guys I just can I just quickly yeah. say thank you? I, I want to say thank you to the, the people who watch the show because yeah. um every single time I come on the show, I always feel like I'm super warmly welcome. Um, every single time I come on the show, you guys always offer me tips for how to like improve my lighting. Like I would not have been able to do this without you guys. Um, and every channel or uh, chat or stream or Reddit or whatever I've ever gone on, I've been um, kind of pointed in a million and five directions. So anyway, I digress. Thank you so much for all of you guys for being super awesome and a great uh, group of people to to interact with. So yeah. I don't know if it's just the fact that they're all here or if you just you guys all just I don't know. Anyway, I think the people just love you, Natalie. Thing. I think that's it. So I think the people are just see Kiko's about to make the hearts come on the screen. Yeah. <laughs> So I think the people just love you, Natalie. So guys, give Natalie some more love in the chat. But uh, yeah, you've done a great job. You're awesome at being a panelist and just a great person and friend. So I'm not even drunk, and I'll say that. Kiko was drunk when he said that about Hey, I, I have actually drank like a whole ass beer. So maybe <laughs> See, I'm that's why you're all drunk. sentimental. Because <laughs> maybe. Drinking. Yeah, exactly. I need to start drinking, dude. I need to get more sentimental. Um, but anyway, so thank you so much, Natalie. Is there anything, Natalie, that you want to plug or talk about the collection tour, maybe? Because if you send me that, I could react to it at some point. So it is my goal to get some sort of collection tour. I took a whole lot of photos on how I did this. And um, I wrote a bunch of instructions. So maybe I'll like wow. plug that in some way and send it to you on like, if you have Billy bookcases and you want to do this, I will put together a guide and I'll send that to you. And maybe, Will, you could showcase that because I don't have a channel. But I would love for other people to know how to do it because I put so much 
when I tell you literal hours of my life into doing this. So, yeah. and I could not have done it without <laughs> literally everybody else giving me tips and pointers on how to do all the, 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 the different things. So thank you. Yeah. Well, we got a lot of great comments for you, Natalie, in the chat. You know, uh, sorry, guys, if I missed some. It, you know, Natalie is the voice of reason. You know, hearts for Natalie. Uh, Maria Hodges said, we love you, Nat. So that's great. I love uh, these people. I just, if my confidence ever needs a boost, I'm just coming on Will. Natalie, you got it. Carl, the Pennywise fan himself, he's right there with me. He's giving you a salute. So uh, what CC Thorne said, we love Natalie. Bring her back. And Natalie's ready to come back on the show whenever. So. Oh, my God. I love all these people. See, Cal Natalie is gold. No cap, no printer. Hey, let's go. Bro. <laughs> oh no. Why did you say the things? <laughs> but uh so Natalie, thank you so much for joining. Kiko, dude, there's a new video of yours that people need to go watch directly after the stream. And this is uh correct. you know what what's the deal with that video, dude? Why is it yeah. a banger? We're gonna make it real quick so we get already over time here. So yes. as we go to commercial, guys, the commercial is head right over to YouTube immediately after this. Click on my latest video, mistakes I've made, the five biggest mistakes that I have made as a collector and how you can come back and how I have come back from them as well. It's not hopeless guys. So please check out what those five mistakes are. And the best part is they aren't the canned responses. These are actual things that a few curveballs you might be surprised by. So please, I've decided to post a little bit early a matinee because whenever I post it after the stream, no one watches it. So if I post it before the stream, there I am. Let's go. I'm giving you a presumptive like Kiko. I'm hey, hey, like. hey. So we'll, we'll see how it goes. And, uh, I can probably be depressed later on. So let's pick that's a true. bit different still. That's probably one of the worst. <laughs> I mean, that's not a, it's the same shirt though, bro. It looks like the, it same, is shirt. the same shirt. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Very fancy. So right. Natalie, I don't know if you saw earlier in the stream, I ran a poll about uh, the sleeveless thing and I asked people and I said, should I continue to wear sleeveless or sleeves? It was 50, 50. It was literally. No. Yes, I want to see. I think it, you have to, it was like very beginning of the stream. It might've been 50, 49 by the time I ended it. It was 50% okay, right, so that I should wear sleeves. So. Okay, so in the next one, we're going to do it differently. You have to actually wear a sleeved shirt with a, you got to be, do the classy thing and say, hey, should I, should, should this be the fox or should this be the fox? Mm. Right? We got to put the tie on. You know what? I'm going to get you, I'm going to get you the world's <laughs> only sleeveless <laughs> professional collared shirt. That would be great, actually. <laughs> that would be fantastic. All so right. um Christmas bet. Christmas. Yeah, we're gonna do it. We're gonna do it. But by the way, Luke Christian, before we end things, he said Kiko's next video: how to be a throat goat. Yeah, hundred percent, bro. Hundred percent, Luke. Uh, so yeah. So CC said, yeah, go shirtless. So yeah, I mean, could be. Rose said, gotta show those tattoos. And this was not even completely done yet, but uh, yeah, sometime soon in the future. So anyway, guys, thank you so much for joining us. Check out Kiko's new video. Check out Natalie when she posts her tutorial at some point. And uh, I'll have a Darth Vader review coming in the near future. You can see he's all lit up back there, looking real spicy. But uh, have a good weekend, and uh, we'll catch you in the next video, guys. Peace out. See you later. Bye.